Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, today's uh, event is about the Kannada translation of uh, the last name and sons, mainly. But uh, since they have other people as well, I think the difficulty uh, to speak in English a bit and will be covered by Kannada. Uh, first of all, welcome all of you to right, this uh, uh, wonderful gathering. Right? We have Krishna and others like with us. And I welcome uh, Krishna and Shalila also right, to the event. Uh, even though this is supposed to be a welcome uh, speech, uh, I will also maybe start with thanking right, each one of them. Uh, since they represent uh, perhaps some music writing in India. Uh, you know, uh, writing with respect to music has not been a uh, well explored kind of a uh, genre right, in India, and then they represent the best of best right, amongst, uh, amongst them. Uh, apart from that, of course, uh, I must thank Krishna uh, for apart from being. We all love his music in any case. Uh, for Krishna, for exploring all aspects of around music, uh, whether it is sociology, history, and in all its complexity, and not make it simple. Right? I think it's very easy to make it simple and generalized, and uh, it's kind of difficult uh, many a times to kind of understand the, uh, the the complexities and the interconnections right between society and music, and that uh, he's been doing. And you know, there's the there, there, there word called discourse, and then there's a very good meaning for that. It's supposed to be a conversation, etc. And then I think he represents the best uh, of the true meaning of uh, discourse here. And one other thing is also about walking the talk, right? While you talk about, uh, uh, you know, the knowledge music should go to everybody, etc. But it's not sufficient that you talk about it, but also walk about it. Uh, in the sense that uh, his experiments with uh, conducting the you know, in beaches, in churches, and mosques, etc. They are all one aspect of that, and then I can trust you, sir. Uh, whatever you do, they will be there to listen to your music. Right? So that's, uh, I just want to acknowledge that. And also, we may not agree with one that he says. I mean, the fact that all of us are here is that we sometimes disagree, but still, uh, I think the way of discourse is that we can still have a coffee next morning, right, and can shake hands. I right? think that's, that's important. And this venue especially represents that kind of a discourse make, making uh, position in my view. So, welcome, welcome, sir. And of course, we have seen him evolve as a musician, right? I uh, have been listening to him for the past 25 years now. Uh, nostalgic sometimes that I miss your 2000 early 2000 concert. I know. Yeah, but uh, still that flourish which was there, uh, I really wish. And then there is a wonderful three and a half hour muskat uh, kacheri, right? Where is uh, Singh Khamboji? I don't know how many times I have heard of this, but on um, Estrella Shankar Burnham, right, uh, was class and its own. I said, what you, the dangers of nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, we sometimes yearn for that, that as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Sumangala and um, Shailaja uh, share Bhadravati as their uh, starting points. Right? Uh, so, that's very uh, nice, nice, and uh, Sumangala's uh, uh, theme. Uh, important name in the Kannada literature, and she comes from Sagar Bhutravati, and then she's a chemistry uh, postgraduate. And then more about her, uh, of course, uh, Chelsea and I will talk about it during the course of her introduction. Right? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and finally, Chelsea is Kumar Paro. Uh, here, I can't say that she is a many things bundled into one thing. She is a professor of English, uh, she is a student of history and sociology, and I have had uh, Know, tremendous kind of a uh, opportunity to kind of 
go with her to discuss on music, literature, and the things like that. The kind of learning which I get every time I visit to their place, apart from nice board balls which she gives me, right? They have been uh, welcome, welcome, sir. Uh, welcome, Madam. With that, I will leave the floor to Tarajan for next. Thank you. Commitment as artist and advocate to 
adds power to heal India's deep social divisions. In 2017, we will see the Indira Gandhi Award for National Integration for its services in promoting and preserving national integration in the country. In 2017, he also received Professor Lee Arvind Action Memorial Award for connecting Karnataka music with the common man. And now, that is the Krishna that we are going to discuss and talk to and know in today's Samvata. Soon after Krishna and Kritiyana, Kannada Therbe Kunta, at the Madhul Nidisa, Nipattu Ippatra Ali, and actually, Open up with a Jada and La Balavanagi, Chennai, when you change Agi, Sakash controversy, and you open it. So, I have a different use of one room. Tatar Kishna Bay and the Taran Sutra. Our day, I'll give four Madi Matadi and Anikustana Kanada testing in the Mugla room, Hedro, as a Vijwalu and the Atutuvatanta Mondo. Our Kanada, some made a Shila Barhaga Ali, Mogro, but the Haviasi Patrakat Rukuda. Prajamani and a regular moon of the game, our so much. On the Palam Barita, Churmuri in the head, when the Beckon and the Deva that put was some mother, Barita, Beckon character or someone. Just take a Tuma, Manavio, and the heart to return up for hero and the heart, Hilma Glover. Our Sita and who was the other Katero, Churmade, Hanan and Adder, Pandit Raju Taranatabara, Jivana Katanavanabro, Sampat Sidare, Sarod Mantuta. And now, Mr. Nadin, Adal there again, Infosis Pratistana, Precious Tibetan, Dr. Bessera di Ramana Precious T, Masti Sahitya Puraskara, Bessera Sahitya Precious T, Munta, the Halam Precious Tibetan, Hatanada. I give Vijay Karnataka Mate Ankita, Gentia Ayodusanta. Katas per daily, Niran the Muru or Shakarakala or Humanana, Padro, Adukuda or Bucket of Halo of Shakarana, Kerate, even in a somewhat of the day, Auru, Tama, Anuaga, Anuhovana, a cut for the Rematakuska and the Hagavanuka, both. Is it the Prams of the King Tamunche, one who puts the Katam the Kirupan Chivana, Matkotin, the Bastion and the Kilato, Kirupan Chivana. See, the book was published in 2020. It's a very unique book for many reasons. Perhaps only one of its kind in the literary history of Karnataka. Probably nobody else has brought such a book in the literary history of Karnataka music. And uh, we, we should not be misled by the title, A Brief History of Nuzangam Makers, because it is not history in the uh, normal sense that we take. It is something very complex and it is something very different. If we take it in the ordinary sense, we are lost. Because it is an all encompassing world which includes culture, sociology, human relationships, gender, caste, art, skill, power play, and many more. So, all these things are brought together in this book. In fact, the book brings to the limelight. The unknown citizens of the Karnataka music and their unheard voices are recorded by Krishna in a wonderful way, which has layers of meaning and many shades of experience involved in that. And this book presents those unheard voices along with their skill, the science behind their skill, their art, their aesthetics, and their knowledge that is acquired by practice and experience, which was hitherto unknown to the larger world. And these unknown citizens of Karnataka music are the instrument makers and especially Vridanga makers because they work with animal skin, which involves a lot of unclean work. The canvas of the book is very big. The book has 12 chapters, but the narration is not linear. Therefore, it's very difficult to sum up the book, and that is good because we read. If we sum up, people won't read. So it's very difficult to sum up the book, like poetry. It records the entire process. I, I just bring in the issues that he discusses in the book. It records the entire process of Pranayama making, the skill and the creativity of the maker that goes into it, the socio-cultural issues that caste and gender which are entwined with it, 
It also brings in the politics of power and plays a significant role in the relationship between the maker and the player of the instrument. And very important thing to note here is all these sensitive issues are presented without distorting the facts collected. That's very important. And without villainizing anybody and with all due respect to all those who are involved there. So this is briefly about the book. And now the again. Usually mm -hmm. all the musicians live in their profession. And they never think of anything else but their music. And music in terms of performance. How good the performance should be, how we can make it uh, very successful. These are the thoughts in the minds of the musicians. But how is it that you took a journey, unusual journey, into the art and life of the present of nature. What initiated you? So thank you, Sarajan, uh, for such a grand introduction and brief summary. Actually, the title was a play on the famous book, Brief History of Time. <laughs> so I just, just did a little twist on it, and that's why I called it a brief history, because it's played a little bit, because I think it's Tamil is a kumbh, this little mischievousness, but that's why I twisted the name. But see, uh, as far as this book goes, I am as complicit as anybody else for having never thought of the Mudaka maker or anything. So it's not like, you know, I've always been aware or I've always acknowledged their presence. So it's important that I first place that out. So what did I know about Mudaka makers before? So I have heard some names. Parlan was a name that we've all heard. We have these folklore stories about Parlan and Manihir, which passes on through generations, beyond which Mridanga players were the ones who would say a few things about Mridanga making. Now, beyond that, I knew nothing about them as a truth. Some names. And if I was in Mailapur, I knew there was a Mridanga store here or there. And that boy just knew it very vaguely. I studied Vivekananda College. There's be one maker right outside. So while walking out, I've seen the but I've never bothered to even talk. And so the interesting thing is all these people belong to the Karnataka music world, like the universe that I occupy, but I've never seen them. So the first shocking thing is this is not a this is not a different universe. Technically, it is the universe that I have grown into or sung in, but that shows that any one universe is subdivided. There are universes within universes, and some are unseen, some are black hole and uh, some don't exist at all. So, when I wrote uh, a Southern Music Carnatic story, this is, it was 2013 when it was published, and uh, it looks at caste frontally probably for the first time uh, in the world of, in the world of Indian art, but specifically Carnatic music, uh, especially from what you would call an insider. But I'm hardcore, as hardcore insider as you can get, you can't probably get a, a better insider. So, uh, but few months after it was published, it was going in for the second edition. I was looking for corrections that I wanted to make. When I noticed, it just suddenly, there was no reason for it to strike me. I really asked me why I don't know. I was reading the cast chapter and I suddenly realized that every character who is either critiqued or discussed is a character who performs. Right? So it was as if I had also fought, as critical as I was of the performance in the entire book, I fell into the trap of performance too. Because I only saw the performer. So that book is very critical about the performative and the fact that the imagination needs to go beyond beyond the stage. And what is the stage itself is questioned in the book. But the fact is, I wrote an, an entire chapter of cast only about the people on stage. So it suddenly struck me, what about, and the first people that struck me was Mradana makers, not instrument makers. And the reason it struck me immediately is the idea of skin. And I was like, hmm, so the first reaction for anybody who finds a, such a deep flaw in what you've done is to plug the flaw. It's like, you find that MCL to like quickly cover it, right? So my MC was two paragraphs, which I wrote in like two days. And I was about to send to my editor and say, you just put these two paragraphs. 
So then I ticked all the boxes, no big no more complaint. And that's what I was doing, right? Luckily, some amount of reflection happened and I I called my editor and I said, look, I think there's a problem in this chapter. It's, uh, it is not as self-reflective as I would like it to be. But let's not do anything about it. Let's leave it as it is. Because I don't think I know enough about the Murdangam maker or any instrument maker for me to truly write something. I am writing it to make myself feel better, which I don't want to do. So that's when the journey of this possibility of this book happened. So one thing I want to say is many people ask why Murdangam maker and why not say the Veena maker or Tampura maker. Fair question. One important point is first of course the fact that anybody working with skin comes from an entirely different section in society because the fact is you're working with height. Uh, you're automatically from a marginal section of society. This is true of any high related industry. And it can't be any different in Mirdanam. The other point is that if I buy a Tambura today, my relationship with the maker is limited to that one transaction. It's possible once in a year I may need some tweaking. Violin is the same, Veena is the same, they may have to adjust the, the frets. The interaction is very limited. But does any instrument made of height requires constant connection? You have to have a relationship with that individual. That individual must understand your sound, they must understand your hand, uh, and then you will have to change the, what they call the sadam every few concerts. You will have to change the entire uh, Part. So, which means there's a long term relationship that is by default between uh, happening between you and the maker. Now, to me, that itself was fascinating. So, that is when I said, maybe this is a journey I should take and began the journey. See, when you told, you only observe the people on stage, and not the business of maker, and their constant relationship because of corrections and all. You mean the main question of aesthetics here and also the question of creativity because these are the two very important questions discussed in the book. Probably that is the core. Mm. So can you just highlight a few points because we never knew anything about the creativity or the art or the skill or whatever that goes into it. Aesthetics that have gone into music, even they have a part in it, because it is it's shared. No? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting so, question. Who makes the music? It's very philosophical. I find it as a fascinating philosophical query. Uh, who makes the music? I mean, you really cannot answer that question. But it's good you can't answer that question. It's one of those questions that you should not have an answer for. Uh, because only then you will keep thinking about that for yourself. Right? So, uh, I never thought before that of Mradagam makers as being creative individuals. Um, they were like, uh, you know, just skilled people who did something. Now, the other bigger problem is the only people who ever spoke about Mradagam making till this book came, to a large extent, exceptions are very few, were Mradagam players. And they will always speak as if they did everything. Even today, I went to the Mradagam store in Tamil, they say, Nanga Sutam Pato. They didn't do anything. But then make us doing it, right? And they will say, you know, for the Murdangam, you need this kind of skin selection is very difficult. Not one of them have gone to the abattoir and chosen skin in their life. Okay, not one. Okay. I know in my experience there is only one musician before me who has ever visited an abattoir. Only one Murdangam is who ever visited in the seniors. Okay. Nobody else knows. So they'll say, no, the skin. So everything ultimately was appropriated as by the Murdanam player and communicated by them. The other thing, the Murdanam till, I'm very happy to say this, that until the, after the book was published, they started talking about the Murdanam as a Murdanam maker. Until then they were called repairers. They used to call them repairers. But now I see Facebook posts my Murdanam maker. I'm very happy. I'm like, okay, that's a huge shift. So the, the tougher question, which I think, uh, which I think is important, is this whole idea of knowledge, which is where creativity and aesthetics start. So how does knowledge get acknowledged as knowledge? You know, where is something knowledge? What is the construction that is required for something to 
given self that position or for us to see it. Now, a lot of people don't consider what the makers do is knowledge. Whereas, whereas Bhagat Mani is playing or Umiya Prabhu Shivaram is playing is just pure, unadulterated knowledge. You want to question the knowledge. The other thing, there are certain knowledge that you want to question. You might disagree, but you will not question. And you definitely will not disrespect. But you will disrespect a maker like this. So, this idea of what gives something that position of being something that needs to be known or something that is part of wisdom is, was for me fascinating to look at. This isn't just to observe. Because everything these people do is just tremendous knowledge. It's tremendous knowledge. I mean, the kind of sensibility that they have in terms of sound. I don't think any musician hears sound like the maker does. No musician can hear it like the maker. Not possible. So, there has this word in Tamil, it's a kaibal. That is, every Murdangam artist has that, or they say tol patra, in a few words. That is, it's very, the tol patra is a very interesting expression. It's not a book, but it's an interesting expression. So, it is the connection between the hand and the skin. Okay? They say the good Murdangas have tol patra. It's very interesting that you would actually use that, experience, that expression. So, you only talk about this Murdangam artist's hand and the, and the face of the playing surface. But what about the person who's given you that surface? How does that person know how, what kind of surface will have that patra with your hand? What does the maker need to do to make sure that you have that sound that people say, aha, look. You know, one maker said this to me and it's in the book. He said, uh, we, our work starts in blood. Uh, we spend time in blood and in, in what you, you would consider filth. But once the Murdangam player plays one stroke, it's all divine. <laughs> <laughs> he said that I, I'll never forget some of these statements. And they would actually say very normal. That's normalized. And I'm listening to it and I'm in very, very deeply upset at that point to hear that because it's again a display of a lack of respect for that individual. The normalization of the lack of respect. Also, the individual not realizing that he is this person of such great value. See, the very choice of the skin involves so much of experience, so much of skill, and so much of knowledge that is accumulated for Absolutely. generations. Absolutely. Generations. Speak so, I can, I can tell you about my experience. So, that's what everybody loved that chapter in this book. Uh, so, I went to the Abadwar. Uh, where the skin is actually, the cows are skin. So first the maker refused to take me, he said you will faint, you will not survive that. It's not like seeing, you know, a butcher shop, it's not the same. And it's true, it's not the same. You may eat non vegetarian, you may go to butcher, you may buy chicken, you may buy mutton, but this is something else. This is like a separate entity. So I said, no, no, I have to. My whole point is unless I'm willing to participate in the entire process of what happens. I really don't know. I, this, I honestly, at that point, I didn't know what I was going to write. I was just on this journey of trying to understand. I just wanted to understand everything. So I went with great trepidation. I'm not sure. Uh, my student was supposed to accompany me very cleverly that morning. Said I'm very very tired. He backed off. So he didn't want to risk the morning in the Abattoa. So this is a central station in, in Chennai, and it was the most surreal experience I've had. First, I did not faint, luckily. Uh, but the whole experience was completely silly. I have I had not seen anything like that. You know, and there, it was a Sunday morning, they just there was cow, buffalo, there's a goat, there's a goat toti, and there is a cow section, there's a buffalo section, which is kind of interesting. There's blood everywhere, there is intestines everywhere, there's water everywhere, there's goo everywhere, there's all kinds of things everywhere. But it's all very normal. That's what first struck me. Everybody there was just doing their job. It was their life. And to me, that completely changed the way I entered that space. So, the first thing I went there, I said, Tamil is in Tamil, he said, Now, the guy telling me, Tisa Prangla has blood all over his hands, his shirt is full of blood, he has a lungi tied up, and said, Tisa Prangla. Now, this entire thing is. I would never experience that I would have, you know, and then, so I realized that 
This is just normal life. So very soon, I just felt I was part of this world. And we used to experience the skin. So Kumar, Susan Kumar who was my main making guide in this entire trip, the entire journey of four years. He's an amazing guy. So Kumar said, uh, we asked him, have you kept the skin? The guy there was had already ready one skin. So you must realize that many people make two mistakes. Murdam makers, Murdam plays me lying for decades that it is dead cow skin that rather naturally dead cow. So a naturally dead animal skin you cannot use because the blood will clot. The moment the blood clots, the skin becomes hard. There is no resonance. So the animal has to be killed, the blood has to be drained, and only then do you get the softness of skin. So that's the first slide. Then the second very convenient one is, you know, anyway they kill it for meat. So that's also a lie. Because you can't just say, oh, that cow has been cut for, uh, for beef, you can just know. So usually, a cow or a buffalo, maybe we should say more cow today, a cow that is killed for a mridanga is chosen carefully because it should have at least delivered three times. Because if I may just, if I am the cow, so the skin is like this, right? So the most important part of the skin is here, at the bottom stomach. So if she is delivered, there is elasticity that happens in the stomach. So you need that elasticity to get resonance. So, it's not any cow. So, yes, it goes for me, but there is a certain specialization here that you need to acknowledge. So, these two lies, unfortunately, are still being told. I wish they would stop at least talking about it. So, I was there and I remember there was this just lump something there. And Kumar said, Kumar, I'd say it better to us. So, touch it. Most crazy thing I've done. It's a lump of blood and one black and brown hair. You know, just as gross as you can get, right? So I said, yeah, okay. And I get this gooey thing in my hand. And he said, no, that's bad skin. So I said, how do you know? He said, he's not been touched yet. He was just looking at it. And he said, no, that won't work. So he said, this is bad, give me another one. So that guy said, wait, I've kept one more for you. But then we chose that skin. So from choosing the skin, um, how do they choose in terms of the color of the skin, the follicles, in a, in a, in a goat skin, uh, sometimes they'll say, should there be, can there be dots or not? It's very interesting. And all these are, are, are things they have learned through generations. They see from sight, from feel. And the other thing that they have to be very careful is even when you cut, take the skin out, there's a whole process of you know, sledding and putting circles and all that. The uh, thickness must be equal on all sides. If the thickness is not equal on all sides, you will get different pitches on each side. So if there is a skin like that, you have to compensate for it. So it's a very, very minutely skilled process. Mind. And it is not only at the end. You have to be watching for this from the beginning. Then combination of skins. So if you look at the right side of the brother head, which you all will see from the stage, uh, what you the, the circumference that you see is cow skin. And the black that you see is actually a membrane of goat skin behind. Okay? And then there is one little thin skin which is more a support structure. That could be buffalo, usually it's buffalo, but could be also come anyway. But and it's all most beautifully knitted together. It's a knitting, it's just it's just standing how they do it. It's it's just gorgeous. Now you can't just choose take one goat, take one cow. No. Depending on the cow skin, depending on the goat skin, they're selecting the combination carefully. The combination can make it messy. So there is so much in this. And even after four years and spending hours video documenting every section, looking at that video again and again, every time calling Kumar and saying, I don't understand this. What is this word you're using? What is this? I am still amazed by what they figured out and how they figured out. So it's, it's, it's phenomenal, a truly phenomenal piece of artwork. That's what it is. It's a phenomenal piece of skill that creativity is never acknowledged. See, for example, Muruswami, yeah. his sense of pitch. See, we celebrate MS. Yeah. We celebrate MS because uh, for pitch perfection.
But nobody so far still I read your book. Nobody has celebrated the pitch perfection of Munuswami. Oh, no. like, Even in such a dim and in such a noisy place, he would do it perfectly. He would tell the brother the player, take it. It is ready, you can go in. So Munuswami is one of the old makers of the city of Udras. And I didn't know this name existed. And I can tell you, most Murugan artists don't know this name, even they're born and brought up in the city of Madras. He used to have his shop on a main road. And even the most senior Murugan have said he was unbelievable. He said, even traffic was less, whatever. He used to sit there and he was perfectly tuned. And the Murugan artist never had to check. And if, and if, if you bothered him too much, he would say, just go. I know what I'm doing. Right? If you don't trust me, just go. And especially at the, what the makers usually do, they can't say this with senior brothers, right? So they send their students, that's the best place to show all their anger. So it's such a discriminative relationship. So who do you show it on? Some junior will come, so just give it to him. That junior used to get it from the breaker, obviously, and that's completely understandable. So, I mean, Guru Swami, or you know, Parla, the Bhai, yeah. probably the superstar. I still think Rajamanikum is an eco superstar, that's my position. But Parla, he could not hear. The man could not hear. Uh, but he used to do. So I guess he had he was maybe hard of hearing, probably not deaf in that sense. But this man could tune perfectly. He could make a Mradangam for Parati Supranam today, he'd make a Mradangam for uh, Mani he'd make it for everybody. And the man was truly a genius. And we should have a statue for him. <laughs> Nobody has thought about it. In having this dialogue, everybody thinks about either Maniaya or Padani, yeah. and even Murugudu's side line. Completely, yeah. See, uh, There's a hierarchy there. Yeah, that's what I wanted to come to the point. How uh, there were equal uh, capacity, there were equal skill, Padani and yeah. uh, this thing. But still, there was a hierarchy. And you know, well, so a simple answer is caste. I mean, it's just straightforward uh, answer is caste. There's no other way to put it out. It's, it's very clear that, of course, there's a larger sociological conversation about what is happening in India in the early 20th century, etc., etc. I'm not going into that. But what basically was happening is, see, money and the money is entry, which is a very interesting entry. Until one year came, Murdana playing, especially what you would call the technical playing, was considered incapable. Brahmins were considered incapable of it. And it was the fortress of the Isai Vedas or the community other or the hereditary community of artists and, and dancers. Now, money, I think money as guru was there, of course, in the Vajana area. But if you see where they operated, they mainly operated in Bhajana, in Navasankirtana, in that realm, and teaching. Now, the real serious performance and whether it's dance or thing, it was done because the uh, Isai Vedas, the last name builder usually, who were operating. Now, money here. Coming, I think, was a phenomenon of the Brahmin community. Here was this superstar of their own. And the natural tendency then is to push the superstar. And he was a superstar. I mean, nobody is ever denying the greatness of the artist when they are making the sociological observation. But the point is, he was not the only superstar. So what makes him singular is where the sociology comes in. Money then becomes this you know this whole story that the Vodo Dakshina Murti Pudai used to, he's a Gajira artist, used to sit in front, and I uh, used to sit in front and Madan used to sit behind, and then hearing money here, he gave his space. All these are just folklores that people just to up, up a person's social profile. And it's only told by the same people. Right? Yeah. Who else tell you? Same people tell you. So, what exactly happened there could be slightly more complicated. I have a few theories for it, but I'll tell you another day. Um, so this entire pushing this man to that level of startup meant everybody was competing with it, including Pardi. Pardi was great, but dot dot dot. That, that but will cancel. You will never have but with money. Has anybody said money is great, but you dare not? You will be like crucified for it. I mean, why? Why? You you can't have a critical conversation on this person. So if it is, if, if these kind of things are happening even within the playing fraternity, then imagine the making. It doesn't exist. So Murugudi was further away, and I think Murugudi had another complication. He was a very strong-willed man. He was from a different community, the Sayerway community. 
And he was a very tough man. Everybody was scared of Murku. He was a very tough man, very brash, probably spoke his mind directly. Now, that made him, if you see, that made him even further away from Stalin. So the other question is, who has the right to be, to show power? If money is show power, it is fine. But Murku cannot show power. It's about very interesting interplays. Or how does Pardini need to behave? Or how does Maria need to behave? See, these are such very, very complicated interspaces from which we get these people who occupy certain places. It's very little to do with their actual abilities. Very little. Yeah, I think uh, one very important question of ASL is also involved here with the hand situation. For example, Sadis, that is Bharatanatyam, what we call today, and the Isai Vedana uh, community, they had a great deal to contribute to the Amudalam day because they had a Tamil tradition behind them. Just like music, that is vocal, when it changed hands, and just like Sadi, when it became Bharatanatyam, Amudalam uh, day also changed hands. What was the change in the kind of ASL? Uh, that's a very important. Yes, I think the book there is a mention of that in terms of making technique changing. So how did so another thing that comes out is making technique changing for style change? So it's a very fascinating thing. If you look at uh, if you listen to very old recordings, you could go online and do it on YouTube. Say a pre manier or a contemporary Palgat manier recording of names of people who may not know. You see that the style of playing is entirely different. The Mridangam is with the singing. The Mridangam is not front stage. Right? It, is, it does not become the star of the show. Now, Manier changed the dimension very fast. Manier made the Mridangam front of Now, this means tonality has to change. Playing style is changing. This means approach to music is changing. Approach to accompaniment is changing, which means making has to change. Because the maker then has to make sure that Maria gets that. You know, Maria has loved a grand presence. You know, I always say when Maria came, there were three Mardangam, there were four students, there were two makers. It was like an entourage. <laughs> like a key right? right? Truly, and that, that comes from what kind of confidence, that comes from what kind of background. I mean, I can't imagine anybody else having that confidence if they didn't have a community behind them, of course. Or if I was going to put it in a feminist context, imagine a man coming to a concert vis a vis a woman coming to a concert. Right? It's the same. So, whenever people don't again understand caste, I like to frame it like this. And they say, oh, it's the same. It's like, yeah, it's the same. Not different. Especially after caste women. Very difficult. It's a big problem. They'll understand feminism, but they will not understand caste. I'm like, if you feel it, you must know what a person who is who's, you know, deprived in social, any other category, feels. Because you feel it. I won't feel anything. I'm just as privileged, thinking privileged as possible. Right? So, it's very interesting on how the sound changed, which means the playing changed. And that, the Manier impact is the head of if you want to call it. Now, I'm not judging this good, bad, or something. That's a question of each one's opinions. And I, there's no point in going in that direction of, of conversation. But the fact that there is a huge chasm between money before Manier and after Manier cannot be generated. Even Parani's style of playing is very different. You can see the Mridham is part of the music. With Maria, he's always making sure you see the Mridham. He's directing your attention towards him. Okay, this is a very powerful statement this man is making. It's a personality statement. It is an artistic statement. It is that. So the Mridham maker, because of Parlan, we got a new sound. So this thing called, so just to give you, if you look at the again, the, the dominant head in the there are two skins and there's a little gap between the two, okay. Now inside that, they used to put sticks. Basically, we got Gucci, Gucci stick, of course. And it used to be the same stick used in a broom, okay. And at some point, Maria wanted a far more much is more strong sound, okay. Or whether he expressed this to Parlan, we don't know, or whether Parlan sensed it, we don't know. Parlan comes up with this innovative idea. He says, why don't we try putting very minute granules of a special stone in that little wedge in between? 
and brings out a sound that money has never heard, which is called the Kapti Mountain Wind. Now, why does this come out? This enhances money or sound like unbelievable. It becomes that grand, strong money or sound which is like hits your heart. You hear money and put something, your heart is like pounding. That's because of this innovation of Parman. Nobody knows this. So everything changes, right? The style changes, the playing changes, the compositional flavor changes, the singing style changes. I mean, I, I can give you a hundred examples of DK Jairaman singing Sangati only because money is playing. So then you are singing for the There are interesting power dynamics that are happening over here, right? Uh, I can I can give Narachi Narachi which I sang yesterday. Yesterday. It's a classic example where there were certain things sung only because money was playing. Right? So there, there are many cases of these things uh, happening. And the maker is responding to every one of this. And is one step ahead sometimes. So Parlan knew what money had wanted and comes up and, and then what happens to this sound is interesting. This sound then becomes the respectable sound of the world. Fascinating. This new innovation, usually we say we like everything old in this country, right? We actually like the new things, but we never say it. Uh, this is a new innovation, but this becomes a, represent a representation of oldness. How is that possible? If anybody hears a money or mother of sound, they say, oh, you get a feeling that this is 2000 years old. Boss, that just came to being in 1960s. Till then, that sound didn't exist. But what you feel that you know, even me as I'm speaking this, I'm hearing money or sound and I'm feeling antiquity. How is it possible? You know, this is this dichotomy is fascinating. Just because I articulate it intellectually doesn't mean I don't feel it still. That's the most interesting part. Right? So and then what happens is the Gucci Pradanam or the Shaba Pradanam becomes the cheap style. And then there's another association. Yes, that's what I want. Gucci has it becomes gender specific. Yeah, yes. Kuchi is women Madhana, Kapti is men Madhana. Fascinating. Within like ah, uh, within 20 years, everything is changing. Right? Even now, many people play Kuchi. Even people who play Kuchi, younger generation, will still say Kapti has one sound. He is not playing it. But he will still say it. Like, why are you saying it? You only play Kuchi. That's why. Gauruma, Gauruma. What Gauruma, Gauruma? What Gauruma? This is a very interesting change that has taken place. Started it becoming Bharatanatyam. Similar kind of change took place. Uh, structures of patriarchy, and the structures of patriarchal values became very deeply ingrained in you. And similarly, when Rudan uh, Kampaign changed hands into Brahmin's uh, hands, the same kind oh, of change yeah, has taken place. Similar changes. I mean, we, because earlier that structure of patriarchy was not there when we go into the life of Bala, no. and Anamal, or whoever it is. No. That kind of a structure was not there. But gradually, how along the years, I think, gender yeah. also set me very and, deeply. I think the entire thing is a puritanical aspect. Yes, exactly. So, the idea of how does one make this is a this is a want to make this pure in all fashions. Yeah. Right? And the moment you say that, you're deciding what can you do. Yeah, and then and then in the method of sound, you're then quali qualifying what is respectable sound. What actually, you're qualifying morality. Exactly. So with sound, you see one thing is one problem is you always discuss these things in terms of terms, but never in terms of sound. Sound actually communicates much more than you realize. Yes. So everybody sees a dance, they can talk about Sadhir Bharatanatyam, at least the discourse now is out there to a large extent people are talking. But in the sound, all this is already being communicated. It's being felt. I mean, how a concert should be presented. This is just male versus more. You may like it, but just accept it as that. You still like it. I'm not going to argue with your likes or dislikes. But it is, that's what it is. It's habitual male masses more. Who framed modern Carnatic music? Upper caste men. They borrowed from the men from the Isi Vela. They are also men. See, patriarchy yes. transcends all divisions, yes. right? So, uh, the men from the Isi Vela community, you took also from the women from the Isi Vela community. And then you created your moral patriarchy over this, and then everybody has to follow suit. So many things have been framed this way, and everybody we all follow suit by everybody. We all follow suit. I find one more thing very interesting in the book. This is in the framework of what we have discussed. 
the study of food. Huh. That's a very important thing that struck me like anything because globally also that answer is there. Some food is supposed to be the right kind of thing that is standard and that's the realistic kind of thing. Now that has come into this also. Yeah. Uh, you speak about this. Yeah, I mean, the conversation is fascinating. I was sitting in another colleague's house with a player. This was when we were trying to understand the making. And uh, that's a long process. It takes two, three hours to do one little thing, right? So it's really talk about so many other things as you were eating and somehow something about food started. And uh, suddenly it just struck me this interesting conversation. I said, so tell me what you have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is what I started as. And then you, you listen to this talk, and my colleague who was with me was getting uncomfortable within a few seconds. Because he suddenly figured where this conversation was going. <laughs> First, he did. He's a very sweet guy who actually disowned that any connection with the book after about three interviews. He said, I want nothing to eat. Which is fine, that's his choice. But I said, okay, what do you eat for breakfast? What do you eat for lunch? And then I see this makers talking about how this mommy's rasam is great and in their house they make. Just, but what do you eat in your house? That was my question. And what was very interesting is how the food habits of makers have changed. What they eat has changed. Because a lot of their work happens to be in the Mridangam player's house. Now, in the good old days, they could not even enter the main spaces, right? Then there are spatial shifts that happens to discrimination. And in the spatial shifts, they probably start getting a meal or so, right? Probably the plate and the tumbler is separate for some time. Then maybe now we've transcended that also to some extent. But there is this very close relationship. But it's a very complex world for many of the Dalit makers. Unlike, shall we say, the Dalit act, Dalit, the proactive Dalit actors, whose world is not entirely within a cultural Brahminical sphere. So they are outside it, you can, you can push back. Now imagine if you are a maker whose entire cultural occupation sphere is at the heart and core of the Brahmin community. And your existence depends on that. It's like a trap within a trap. Right? You can't become an activist and say, I forget it, all this or you lose you, you, your profession. You can't exist. And they love their work. Let's also see that they just love their work. They're so proud of being great makers, despite everything. So when people say, Why does he leave the job? I said, Do you know what it means to make a brother? Do you know how much pleasure a brother maker gets when he when he puts one dim and the sound comes? Uh, so far, I, I know that feeling as a musician when I sing star, like mm, it's happening. It's exactly the same. You know, there's that very intimate connection. That connection, you can see that their faces will just glow. You know, just glow when they've got that building of it. So, this conversation is fascinating. So much talk we can read. No, nowadays we stop. Why do you stop? I said, I eat beef. Where do you eat beef? No, oh, you guys can eat beef, but we can't. <laughs> that was interesting. So, me eating beef can be a political statement. But he can't be me. So because his cultural sphere is, he can't be having that conversation with the, with the world he occupies. So the food, the words that they use, for example. You know, he was using terms that were entirely terms that I would use in my brand home. Uh, uh, like he said, <laughs> so in, in Tamil, you say, why it is contacting. Okay. In the brand in Tamil, it's Atakari. Atta means both the the pond, but also means a home because every home had a pond, possibly. So, Adhikari is a woman of the house in Brahminical Tamil. Anybody in Tamil Nadu will never say Adhikari. It's a pond So, this man is telling me Adhikari. He's like, what? You call her Adhikari? I asked him, like, Adhikari? So, the language changes, the terms change, the food changes. And this is entirely happening because of our, our equation. It's happening subconsciously. Nobody is doing it purposely, and I'm not saying the Mughal player is enforcing it. No, but by default, this kind of very complex changes are happening, right? And uh, through generations, then you can imagine they get passed on. So it's, I, I remember that two-hour conversation. It was, fat. it was like, oh my God, so much has changed in your lives, and I don't think they will recognize that so much has changed. I don't really think there was two generations of makers. Kumar is slightly younger, Melgi's senior. 
Kumar was fighting with Delhi. There was an argument between both of them. Kumar is younger, so he still pushed back. He is more like the younger tough guy. So if they don't know what Delhi is, they don't know. That's how it should be. This is what we should do. So you are speak, uh, speaking of changes that were taking place. See, uh, my own field experience tells me that we go with some prefixed ideas in our mind and then start doing the field work. But an entire change takes place. And I think you, the whole book is based on interviews and feedback. Because I did all my thesis based on the feedback, going to the villages and working with them. Right? I was working on the identity question. So perhaps you are also working on similar situations. How did it change? Did you go with some uh, fixed idea and everything changed? It's first, many people, some people have told me that the book does not have a bibliography. So, you know, all these people think that the bibliography defines whether the book is good or not. I know many people go to a store and look at the bibliography first. Then a crappy book can have good bibliography, right? So, I, in fact, I, I very consciously made a decision that my only source for knowledge are the makers. There's no other source for knowledge. Um, yes, I did read, I'm not that I did not, but they were very tertiary in readings. And my idea was to say this book is entirely based on the knowledge that these people are giving me. Just because nobody has written a paper about it or a book about it doesn't make it any less or doesn't make it uncritical. So, for me, when I started this journey, I didn't know what the book was going to look like at all because I had no clue. I, I knew that the relationship is going to be interesting without doubt because of the social positioning of the two main worlds the Brahmin player and the Dalit or the marginalized maker. It has to be. But I, I honestly did not, even in my remotest recesses of my mind, think of the complexities of the relationship. Right? One of the problems of being an upper caste, anti caste person is you also simplify it a lot. You know? Because you first give yourself great credit for being anti caste. It's what an ego you must have, right? You did nothing actually. Being anti caste is not some. I, mean, I don't even know why we think it's a big deal if you come from privilege. I mean, it's a basic human thing you can do. So, right? But you don't think of it that way, right? Because you look at your, you think you've done something by, you know, revolutionized your own, you know, some nonsense. So, and you also what you do is immediately you make the issue very easy. Right? Uh, as being very black and white. This book told me there is no black and white. The entire thing is great. It's a very complicated sphere of how these negotiations are constantly happening. And to me, that was a huge learning. The, so I was, what does a person actually feel when they say something? How does one acknowledge the feeling, but also acknowledge the problem of what is happening? Right? So by acknowledging the feeling, am I diminishing the problem? These are very, like, like many things are normalized for the maker. The maker will tell you very simply, they are not telling you that it's a major problem. They are not telling you that I'm uh, that this guy is doing to get complaining to you. They say, yeah, I know that this happens to me. Okay, so they are telling you. Now, as an observer, you are you're listening to that. And at times you can poke into it. With some people you cannot. You can't push into that sphere. So, many learnings for me. Like, I, for example, have written until then only from my own ideations. For the first time, I was actually becoming a journalist, quasi, anthropological kind of work. I have never done that work in my life. I don't know how to interview a person. I don't know how to build question after question. So it was for me completely new universe. And very importantly, I don't know where I should draw the line. I've said it in the book. When am I prime using my power of caste and positionality and I can't cross that line? How do I know when I should come? I didn't know. I probably did a few times. Say in the book. Maybe I did. Maybe I should have asked questions that I had no business asking. But those were very difficult spaces. But all that taught me about so how so complicated the relationships are. And also how this is the whole difficulty mode. We can ask this question of all of ourselves. Do we really have relationships in life? Sounds like a very philosophical, but it's true. Or do we have relationships based, relationships which are conditioned by who you are and who I am, irrespective of who you are? So, do we know each other really? Or do I know 
your position to know my position and then we are negotiating two positions. Right? So this, in spite of all this, I saw love somewhere. Now, that was the one that completely changed the outlook for me. He said, how can love exist there? You know, one of the problems in modern discourse of discrimination is that you are not un unable to acknowledge the messiness of love. You want to sound correct, whether it is any kind of discriminative act. But, I mean, you can say, no, it's not love, it's just utilitarian, the person is using your, I know all the explanations, I know all the arguments. But, you speak to that person, that person is feeling something. How do I factor that feeling? I don't know how to factor it. Because my very, very strong social position says, boss, no, this is ugly. I agree. But then I see this affection. And the person is expressing affection. Do I disregard it? And say, no, and in terms of a discriminative sociological discourse, that needs to be disregarded. No, why do I do that? So it was, those spaces were very hard. Very hard for me to navigate. How do I present those spaces? You know, so which is why the book has certain sections where you are me commenting, but certain sections, things are happening. So I want to distance my observation or my reflections from what is being said. So nothing that was said was ever removed from the text. Even when I disagreed with it, it was it's all there. And then all you will hear is me saying, I feel this way. It's up to you to take my observation or not. That's your problem, not mine. But that was Parlant Mani relationship is a classic case for that. It's the most fascinating relationship that I I ever seen. Completely bound by caste. Entirely, top to bottom. But there is a question. Not you criteria, something beyond. Manier makes sure that this man, when Parlant is very sick towards the end of his life, that every morning his urine goes for testing. He sends a manager to pick up the urine to the manager is Raya who hates doing it. Like I have to take this stupid fellow's urine. He says, but well, he uses very casteist uh, terms there, which I have not. But why would money do that? He was still not working for it. Okay, you could say he respected his artistry. No, there's something else. It also tells us maybe we are actually unable to love in society because of social construction. That we really cannot love another person. Maybe it's the other side that I love. That I really cannot love another person because I'm always constructed by my identities. So for me, who has always been very interested in identities, how I be structured, this was a, also a great learning for me. Now I think this must be a very, very sensitive question of feedback and who is doing the feedback and about who they are doing the feedback because. I used to work with Rama, but he was uh, yeah. never in yeah. the I had one very intellectual collective where I used to go and And one question and one comment, let me say, always used to come from the participants. That is, these yellow English speaking yeah. people, they appropriate our experience uh -huh. and they get names, they oh, yeah. get all awards and everything. And how is our predicament changed? And this question always used to come up for this question, and now I'd like to ask the same question. Yeah, you, you can ask a simple question, who's Dean Krishna to write this book? <laughs> well, it's a very fair question. I mean, I think it's a question that needs to be constantly asked so that I keep thinking about it. Um, yeah, it's appropriation. It's also the, the fact that, am I writing the book from what would be called the Brahmin gaze? Or what we call the white gaze, if it was about African medicine. Okay. It's a very fair question. And, and, I'll be fair to say that I don't have a perfect answer for the question. I don't have a perfect answer for the question. But I want to say two, two important things. Is that as far as this book is concerned, now first, nobody even within the Dalit intellectual community knew the existence of these people. So let's first make that very clear. Okay, Even within the Dalit intellectual uh, community, most people did not know. As far as I know, there have been in the last 20 years about two articles about Mradaka makers. One was, a, I think, uh, Kolapan wrote in the Express many years ago. I didn't watch it. Kolapan told me recently. And there's an article by Esaran in the Outlook that came in the early 2001 and Rajmanikam was alive. To me, these are the only two pieces of writing in the public domain. And I guess there's a little clip which is a little over older on uh, Anthony, the senior maker. 
So the world didn't know the existence. So I just want to say that this is a real reality. The secondly, now I come to my own village. Second, the other thing is with them to understand their work, it's important that you're part of the music. It is very difficult for you not to understand the music. I'm saying the maker's music. Now you have to understand the music. I can't write about the makers without understanding music. So in a way, there's a trap that you need to be in that world. Well, three. Ultimately, then the maker should have written it to agree, but the construction within doesn't allow that to happen. Now there's a trap, within a trap, within a trap. Okay. So do I have a right to write? I think more than that, I think it's important to see how I write. I have, as far as possible, always acknowledge repeatedly in the book my complicity with what's going on and my unawareness of what is happening. And my own, there are many times in the book I've challenged myself in the way I've looked at something. Now that's the best you can do with your privilege. Now if you say I had no business writing the book, I mean I don't have an argument for that. Maybe. Fine. But I do think that there was a role that I role that needed to be played here. I think there was a role. The question is also this, after this what am I doing? My job is to step back. My job is done. Then the discourse needs to have its own life. It's possible a maker will write a book in three, four years, maybe say to Krishna, you are a whole lot of crap. Which is fine. And that's what public discourse is. Right? But therefore it is a very tricky space. Of a person with privilege writing on this, you know, like a man, you know, it's something. How do you write? Do you write? And also, time design. When do you write? When do you? Write? So it's a very complicated space. Does not have a good answer. All I can say is I'm always watchful of it. And in the book, I also question appropriation. Came. Appropriation knowledge. In the book, I make sure to constantly say it is their knowledge. I am only a vessel here. That's all. And it has a life change. So it's an it's important question. As the book, you know, Kasamadi pretty much, Kasamadi is a maker in, in near Palakkad. And what is it? The toughest interview I ever did. Because as most Malayalis, all you say is, hmm. Ah, are they, I want to open his mouth. And I'm asking question after question. His son is trying to answer, but I don't want his son to answer. His uncle is not, I don't want to answer because I know this is the man who knows stuff. But you say, I don't want to look at my face. I don't want to look at my face. Such a this classic Malayali. I don't see it every but you know what I mean. But after a point, I was, I was lost. You know, you get agitated, right? After a point, when the person is not giving you even that little middle room, you need that little opening where you quickly get it and then you tell the guy. And then your questions will work. Don't give me that little room. Now, he basically, his attitude was this he said, How many people have come and taken videos? How many people come and taken photographs? They put articles. My life is still the same. It's not going to change my life. So I have to not convince him that it will change his life. I have to convince him that I'm not doing it for myself. That's what he was bothered about. That I was doing it because I was doing it to write a book. That, so the one important thing that I think that I have tried to communicate with everybody I have a relationship with is that first it was a relationship. It was not a book dependent relationship. Mm. Two, I was genuinely interested in learning something. That's the best you can do. And after <coughs> this book has come out, I do see some changes. Mm. I do see interesting changes in relationships. I see but the makers themselves saying certain things have changed. It's very slow. Social relationship changes take maybe one generation or two generations. So it's nice to see it. Now, did the book do it? Maybe the book did, maybe it did, but at least it brought that discourse and got the it got the Murdanam player to start thinking about it. Which meant that the relationship shifted. I mean that something else is going on. So maybe there has been some change. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe there's much more that needs to be done. But I think it's important to say that at this I agree that there is a structural issue here. Whatever I may say now. Structurally, PM Krishna is still getting the name to the book. Let's be very clear about it. That's not going to go away. All my philosophical mambo jumbo is not going to wipe that out. But that's a trap. That is a trap. If, so how does one remain 
active in working, remain, know when to step back and find a way to keep challenging that. It's very difficult for me. I'm not even complaining, but I'm saying it's a reality. It's a difficult reality uh, that this, any person with caste privilege talking about caste is a problem. Any man talking about feminism is a problem. But if anybody comes and says you cannot talk, I will not. I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. If you come and tell me that, I'll say no. You can you can write 15 articles saying that I'm speaking nonsense. Fine, go ahead. But if you say I don't engage, we have to realize everybody needs to engage in change. Everybody needs to change. And some ways the social or socially powerful have to change even more. So the other question is who is I writing this book for? For people like me. Who am I to speak to a person who makes the murder known? Who am I to speak to those people? I don't know anything. I've had no lived experience. But I want people like me to change. And if that happens, maybe it is something to come out of it. And you brought in the reference of Kasamani. I uh, am reminded that the whole chapter is dedicated to women murder the makers because it's a man's world. Yeah. Every work that involves needs a lot of physical strength and a lot of involvement. Where many women have made their mark, and Krishna has brought in a whole chapter, some from Karnataka with whom Sumagala also has interacted, and some from Kerala, and some from Tamil Nadu. That's very interesting. That's a change, that's a very important change that we can notice in the approach itself, because otherwise it would have been left out of me. Yeah. I didn't knew they existed. Yeah, that's fine. When I started, I mean, you know, I have thought there would be women present in Baker. That, that combination never occurred to my head. Never, I, you know, I've heard, like, you know, it's like, mother to make a man, it was like, very automatic. And then I, that was this story I've said many times, because it's a story which is, again, a story of acknowledgement that happens in the book. So I go to see Caste Money in Vermomba, uh, that's the village. So I've gone with a student of mine, and uh, we've had this very laborious interview, it's went on for an hour and a half plus. And then we were, as we were finishing, a young girl, lady came, wearing a nightie and she came in. And he said, this is Deepa, he said, this is my daughter-in-law, that's what he said when he first met me. Uh, I said, okay, and uh, there was a, her house was like next door. So you can see the skin they come and see. So her front yard, I always say, people don't realize how big skin can be. You know, even a cow, you have no clue the size of the skin, or goat, for example. The goat is small, the skin is massive. So her front yard had four huge buffalo skins. So the buffalo skin is completely opened up and nailed onto the ground. But it's not touching the ground, it's like just off the surface. So the mud is not sticking. This massive thing. So Gita is there, and he's told me, this is Gita's work, but nothing has entered my head. So I just say hello to Gita and say mm -hmm, all these niceties and then for some reason we something else happens which, which forced the conversation to end. But anyway, I left. I come to Palagat to about 25 kilometers away to the hotel and I call my wife. So I said, she's okay, what happened? Tell me. I said, what happened? I spoke to Kasmi, very difficult interview, you know, finally got him to speak, and it was very interesting. All this is over, and then I met Gita and you know, she stopped it. So you interviewed Gita also, right? <laughs> <laughs> and silence from me. <laughs> because I had not even noticed Gita. Right? So I'm like, and of course she gave me the right act. She was like, what? How can you not interview her? You're supposed to be this brave man who realizes all this nonsense. You're sitting there, she's standing in front of you, and you just come back. I said, put the phone down. So I called immediately and I said, Can I meet Gita? Luckily, so I went back. So I had lunch and afternoon we drove back to Virumba. And that's how the interview happened. Like it was such a fantastic conversation. Just fantastic conversation. But I'm just saying that we all do this. You know, it's, you know, it just happens so reflexively. Like, and I never forget it. Like, it never struck me that I need to talk to this woman. It never even struck me that I need to speak to her. And she is the only skin supplier in the end, in almost the biggest flower in Kerala. There are others, but she's like the, the dawn of it. Okay? And she gets a skin from Omstil, uh, who from the abattoir will give her set of skin. She nails it, she cleans it, she does everything, she cuts it. 
and she supplies to most Madan players, Madan players across Kerala. I wouldn't have interviewed her. I would have let that pass. So, I think we all think we're the same. <laughs> I always say when is the worst translation. <laughs> because I tell you why. Every interview have, did not have in English. It was in Tamil or quasi Kannada with uh, Srinivas here, quasi Malayalam in Kerala. So the actual languages of this book is not English. I am so incapable of doing anything in any other language properly. That is my deficiency. This anglicized uh, person. That's all. Simple as that. So, I always, you know, whenever I, when I heard her, for example, read out passages in Bangalore, when we did a similar thing, and when we did the Tamil launch, and, and the Tamil I read because I was part of the process. And it was like, you know, it felt so much closer. To me, I am the author, but mine felt far more distant than the way it was heard in Kannada or in Tamil. It felt hard, you know, found its home kind of thing. Because ultimately, I think these these, even not these terms, but these experiences are grounded in the language of the Seraka. It's much easier for Sumangala or for Arvind and Tamil to find that word. So they, then I said something in English, you know, actually what I'm saying in some manner, you know, because you feel it. And English doesn't have a word to express that specific sensibility. It expresses something in its own construct. Right? So, yeah, so in a way, I, I've done a bad translation. <laughs> One Yarado in the Dilkove Kota. One do maybe he was Kana as a publisher, Jusane, Adana Kanada Terbe Kunta, Yenta Kyochne Mandri in the Kondo. But the Yeratia Prashne, Osha Tamil in the English India Krishna or translate Mandi Tashto Kasta, Nimke Tamil in the Kanada, I mean English in the Kanada Mada Kande, Bodo, Nangan Revidian language, you know, and the Kanaki Yarad Luning experience in the day with Sherman. ಮೃದಂಗಂಕರ್ಸು <laughs> ಹೌದು ಈ ಹಂಗೆ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ದು ಆಂಧ್ರ 
ಕೇರಳ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅದು ಒಂದು ಆಹಾರ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಒಂದು ಜನಜೀವನದ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹೋಲಿಕೆಗಳಿದೆ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಪದಗಳು ಚೂರು ಆಚೆ ಈಚೆ ಆದ್ರೂ ಸೇಮ್ ಪದಗಳಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಮೇನ್ ನೋಟಕ್ಕೆ ನಿಜ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಇದನ್ನು ಓದಿದ್ದು ತಮಿಳ್ ಅಂತಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ತಮಿಳ್ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಚೂರು ಬರು ತೆಲುಗು ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ತಮಿಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬಾಳಾದ್ರೆ ನಂದ್ರಿ ಒಂದು ಗೊತ್ತು ಒಡಕ್ಕ ಮೊದಲು ಗೊತ್ತು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನನ್ಗೆ ಕೂಡ ಏನೋ ಒಂದ್ ನಾನು ತಗೊಡೋದ್ ತಗೊಂಡೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣನು ಒಪ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಆಮೇಲೆ ನನಗೆ ಅಂತ ಶುರುವಾಯ್ತು ಇಲ್ಲ ಈ ತರ ನಾನು ಸುಮ್ನೆ ನನ್ನ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತು ನಾನು ಇದನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಕೊನೆ ಪಕ್ಷ ಒಂದ್ ಎರಡ್ ಮೂರ್ ಜನ ಮೃದಂಗ ಮೇಕರ್ಸ್ ನ ನಾನು ಹತ್ತಿರದಿಂದ ನೋಡ್ಬೇಕು ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಅವ್ರು ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಬರ್ದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ ತಂಜಾವೂರಿನ ಕೀತುಕಾರ ಬೀದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗೋದು ಏನಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಅವರಿಗೆ ತ್ಯಾಗರಾಜರ ಆ ಒಂದು ಸಮಾಧಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಒಂದು ಆ ಒಂದು ಗೌರವದ ಭಾವನೆಯನ್ನ ಒಂದು ನಮ್ಗೊಂದು ಮನ್ಸಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ತುಂಬಿದಂತ ಭಾವನೆಯನ್ನು ಕೊಡುತ್ತಲ್ವ ಒಂದು ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ ತರದ ಒಂದು ಭಾವನೆಯನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಅಂತ ನನ್ಗೆ ಆ ಕೀತುಕಾರ ಬೀದಿ ಆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಓದ್ತಾನೆ ತುಂಬಾ ನನ್ನ ಮನ್ಸೊಳಗೆ ಕೂತ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಬೀದಿ ಹೇಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಲಕ್ಕಿಲಿ ನಾವು ಅದೇ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಆಫೀಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಅಂತ ತಂಜಾವೂರಿಗೆ ಹಾಕೊಂಡ್ವಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಲಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಮೈ ಕಲೀಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ತಮಿಳಿಯನ್ ಸೊ ಅವಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲೇ ಹುಟ್ಟಿ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರು ಅವಳು ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ತಮಿಳು ಮಾತಾಡೋ ಹುಡುಗಿ ಸೊ ಹೋದ್ವಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದು ಏನಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದು ನನ್ಗೆ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲು ನನ್ನ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಬೇರೆದೇ ಒಂದು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದಾಗ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಸಲ ನಾನು ಆಂಟನಿ ಅವರ ಮೊಮ್ಮಗ ಅವರು ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಅವರು ನನ್ಗೆ ಮೃದಂಗ ಅಷ್ಟು ಹತ್ರದಿಂದ ಮೃದಂಗವನ್ನ ಮುಟ್ಟಿದ್ದು ಅವರು ತೋರಿಸಿದ್ರು ಆ ಅಕ್ಕಿನ ಹೇಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಆ ಬಾರು ಹೇಗೆ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಜಸಿಂತ ಮೇರಿ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಮೀಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಜಸಿಂತ ಮೇರಿ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಪರ್ಲಾಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಡಾಟರ್ ನನ್ಗ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದಾಗ ಇವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಬರ್ದಿದ್ದಾರಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ನನ್ನ ಅನುಭವ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ಮನೆ ಅದ್ರ ಮೂರ್ ಮನೆ ಮುಂಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಮರ ಆ ಮರ ಹೇಗೆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ಮನೆಯನ್ನ ಇಡೀ ಬೀದಿಯನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ತಾ ನಿಂತಿದೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅವ್ರ ಆ ಮನೆ ಜಸಿಂತ ಮೇರಿ ಅವ್ರ ಮನೆಗೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ದೇವರುಗಳ ಫೋಟೋಗಳು ಇದೆ ಆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇವರಿದ್ದು ಫೋಟೋ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ಇದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಗಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದಾಗ್ಲೇ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಜತೆಗೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಅವರು ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡವ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಮಣಿಯ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಆ ಪಳನಿ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಪಿಲ್ಲ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅವರೆಲ್ಲ ಜೊತೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಇತ್ತು ಈ ತರದ್ದು ಒಂದು ಮೂರ್ ನಾಲ್ಕ ಜನ ನಾವ್ ಯಾರು ಮೇರು ಕಲಾವಿದರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಅವರೆಲ್ಲ ಹೆಸರುಗಳನ್ನ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಆದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಗಲ್ಲಿ ಜಸಿಂತ ಮೇರಿ ಅವ್ರ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಂತಾಗ್ಲೇ ನಮ್ಗ ಅನ್ಸ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳೋ ಆ ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲೆ ನಾವು ಜಗಮಗಿಸುವ ಆ ಲೋಕ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಜತಿಂತ ಮೇರಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಲ್ಲಿ ಕಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋ ಲೋಕ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡಕ್ಕೂ ಅದೇನೋ ಒಂದ್ ಒಂದ್ ಅರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಇರ್ಬೇಕಿತ್ತು ಆ ಸಂಬಂಧನೇ ಇದ್ರೆ ಆ ಎಲ್ಲ ತಂತುಗಳು ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗೆ ಇದು ಒಂದು ಸಪರೇಟ್ ಆಗಿರೋ ಒಂದ್ ಒಂದು ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಬೀದಿ ತರ ಬಸವಳನ್ನ ನಿಂತ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ಯಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಸ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಆ ಕಿಟ್ಟಂಕಲ್ಲು ಅರಿಯೋ ಅರ್ಧ ಮಾಡೋ ಪುಡಿಯನ್ನ ತೋರಿಸಿದ್ರು ಅದನ್ನ ಅರಿಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಈಗ್ಲೂ ಅವ್ರು ಎಷ್ಟು ಶ್ರಮ ಹಾಕ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಮತ್ತೆ ಮಜ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಫುಲ್ ತಮಿಳಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ನಾನು ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ
ನಾವು ಹೇಗೆ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ನಾವು ಎಷ್ಟೇ ಮುಂದುವರ್ಸೋರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀವಿ ಅಥವಾ ನಾವು ಏನು ಸೆಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀವಿ ಏನೇನು ಸೋಗುಗಳನ್ನ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀವಿ ಬಟ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೋಗುಗಳನ್ನ ಕಳಚ್ಕೊಂಡೆವು ನಾವು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲು ಏನಿದೀವಲ್ಲ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಗೆ ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಘಟ್ಟ ಒಂದು ಇದು ಆಗಿರ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಹಾಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಂತ ಹಾಗೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ನಾನ್ ನಾನು ಕೂಡ ಹೇಮ ಆಗಿರೋ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆ ಇತ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ವರ್ಷದವರೆಗೆ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ನನ್ನ ಒಂದು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ಮೂವತ್ತು ವರ್ಷದವರೆಗೂ ನಾನು ಹೇಮ ತರನೇ ಇದ್ದವಳು ಟ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ ನಾನು ಅದೆಲ್ಲದ್ರಿಂದ ಕಳಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ನನ್ಗೆ ಇಷ್ಟಾದ್ರು ಹೋಗ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಥವಾ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಈ ತರದ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ನೋಡೋಕ್ ಇದು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾಡಿರೋ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಆ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಅವ್ರ ಅವ್ರಿದ್ದ ಜಾಗಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಓಡಾಡ್ತಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಿದ್ರು ನಂತರ ಸುಸೈನ್ ಆತನ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ದು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿಗೆ ಅವರನ್ನ ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ಮತ್ತೆ ಸುಸೈನ್ ಆತ ನನಗೆ ಅಹ್ ವಿಭಸಿದ್ದು ಮತ್ತೆ ಸುಸೈನ್ ಆತ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ದು ಜಾಗ ಆಯ್ತಾ ವಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ವರ್ಕ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಒಂದು ಡೀಸೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅವರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕಾರ್ ಶೆಡ್ ಅದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಅದು ಅಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೂ ನಾನು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನಾನು ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗೋವರೆಗೆ ಅವ್ರು ಈ ತರ ಕಾರ್ ಶೆಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತು ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಕೂಡ ನನ್ನ ತಲೆನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ತಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ವರ್ಕ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೆ ಅದು ಕೂಡ ನನ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಡೆವಿಟೇಷನ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದಂಗೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ನನ್ನ ಅದೃಷ್ಟ ಯಶೋ ಯಶೋಧಮ್ಮನ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಮೀಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕಾಯ್ತು ಬಟ್ ಯಶೋಧಮ್ಮ ಈಗ ಮೃದಂಗ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೆ ಯಶೋಧಮ್ಮ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಸಂಗತಿಗಳು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಕೂಡ ಹಣಕಾಸಿನ ಒಂದು ಸಮಸ್ಯೆಯಿಂದಾಗಿ ಅವ್ರ ಗಂಡ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಆದ್ರೆ ಇವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ತುಂಬಾ ಆಸಕ್ತಿ ಇತ್ತು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇವ್ರು ಕಲ್ಸ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಕಲ್ಸ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಇವ್ರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಆದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಒಂದ್ ಮಾತ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ನನ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ ನಮ್ ಕಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ಅನ್ನ ಜೋಡಿಸಿಕ್ಕಿರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ವಿ ನನಗೇನು ಅನಿಸ್ತಾ ಇರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ವಾಸನೆ ಅಂತ ಕೂಡ ಅನಿಸ್ತಾ ಇರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅದೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೊಟ್ಟೆ ತುಂಬ ಅವಾಗ ನನ್ನ ಮಕ್ಕಳನ್ನ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಯ್ತು ಅದು ನನ್ಗೆ ನನ್ನ ಹೊಟ್ಟೆ ಪಾಡು ಕೂಡ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಬಟ್ ಈಗ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೃದಂಗ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅದ್ರ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಭಜನೆಗಳಿಗೆ ಅಥವಾ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಕಾನ್ಸರ್ಟ್ಗಳಿಗೆ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಗಿ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅವರಷ್ಟು ಗಾಢವಾಗಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿದ್ರು ಈ ತರ ಕೊನೆ ಪಕ್ಷ ಕೆಲವ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಒಡನಾಡಿದ್ದು ನನಗೆ ನನಗೆ ಕೂಡ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಅನ್ನೋ ತರ ಅವ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಲಿಕ್ಕಾಯ್ತು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡೋದು ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ದ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ನಂಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಖುಷಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿತ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನ್ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಊರಿಗೆ ಹೋದಾಗ ನನ್ ಕೀ ಕಾಳ್ ಮೀ ಸೊ ಗೀತಾ ಬಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೀತಾ ಬಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಮಲಯಾಳಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಐವ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಇದೆಲ್ಲನೂ ನನಗೆ ಒಂದು ಹೊಸ ಅನುಭವ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಆದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ನನ್ ನನ್ನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನನ್ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲು ಪುಸ್ತಕ ತಗೊಂಡು ಓದಿದ ನಂತರ ಅನ್ಸಕ್ ಶುರುವಾಯ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಉತ್ಸಾಹ ಏನು ಒಂದು ಬಂಡವಾಳ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದಷ್ಟೇ ಸಾಲದು ಅಂತ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಸಂಗೀತ ಜಗತ್ತಿಗೆ ನಾನು ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ಹೊರಗಿನವಳು ನನ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಸಲ ಅನ್ನಿಸ್ತು ನಾನು ಇವತ್ ಶೈಲಜ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೂ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಪರ್ಸ
ನನಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಅದು ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ತಮಿಳು ಪದಗಳನ್ನ ಹಾಗೆ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ವಿವರಣೆಗಳನ್ನು ಕೊಡೋದು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಈವನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೃದಂಗ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ನಾವೀಗ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ತಟ್ಟು ಬೆಳೆದಳೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾನು ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಸೂತ್ರ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಅನುಸರಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡೆ ಕೊಲೆ ಇವರ ಚರ್ಚೆ ಮಾಡಿದ ನಂತರ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಪದಗಳನ್ನ ತಮಿಳ ಹಾಗೆ ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಯಾವುದಕ್ಕೆ ಕನ್ನಡ ಇದೆ ಕನ್ನಡ ಪದಗಳನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬ್ರಾಕೆಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತಮಿಳು ಪದ ಕೊಡೋದು ಅಥವಾ ತಮಿಳಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ತರ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳೋದು ಅಹ್ ಹಾಗ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಭಾಷೆಗೆ ಏನೊಂದು ಕಸುವ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಕೂಡ ನಮ್ಮ ಕನ್ನಡಿಗರಿಗೂ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕನ್ನಡ ಓದುಗಳಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಮತ್ತೆ ಈ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ನನ್ನ ತುಂಬಾ ತಟ್ಟಿನ ಅಂಶ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಇವರು ಮಣಿಯರಿಯರ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಪರ್ಲಂಡ್ ನಡುವಿನ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದನ್ನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೂಡ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಅಂತ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಅದು ನಿಜವು ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗಿ ಅದೊಂದು ಅವಕಾಶವಾದದ್ದು ಅಥವಾ ಅದು ಬರೀ ಒಂದು ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಆಗಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಒಂದು ಆ ಒಂದು ಇದ್ರೊಳಗಡೆ ಇತ್ತು ಅದು ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳಕ್ಕೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ನನಗೆ ಸಹಾಯ ಮಾಡ್ತ ಅದಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ತುಂಬಾ ಆತೊಳ ತುಂಬಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಈ ಊಹೆ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೂ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದು ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮಂಗೆ ಒಬ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆ ಒಬ್ರು ತೋಟಕ್ಕೆ ಕೆಲ್ಸಕ್ಕೆ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ನಾವು ಅವಳಿಂದ ನನ್ನ ತಮ್ಮ ತಮಾಷೆಗೆ ನಿನ್ ದತ್ತು ಪುತ್ರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮಂಗೆ ಅವಳಂದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಅಚ್ಚುಮೆಚ್ಚು ಎಷ್ಟು ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕುಟ್ಟುಗಳು ಎಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಅವರಿಬ್ರು ನಡುವೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಅಚ್ಚುಮೆಚ್ಚು ಮತ್ತೆ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಒಬ್ಬರೇ ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕಿಗೆಲ್ಲ ಹೋಗ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲ ಅವಳನ್ನ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ಯಾವತ್ತಿಗೂ ನನ್ನ ಸಹಿತ ಹೋಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಏನಕ್ಕೂ ಶಿ ನೆವರ್ ಅಪ್ರಿಷಿಯೇಟ್ ಮೀ ಬಟ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಶಿ ಡಸ್ ನೇತ್ರ ನೇತ್ರ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಏ ಅವಳು ನೋಡಕ್ ಅವ್ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾಳೆ ಏನ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಜಾಣೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಬಹಳ ಜಾಣೆ ಅಂಡ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಶಿ ಡಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಮ್ ಅದೇನು ಅಷ್ಟು ಸುಲಭಾತ್ ನೀವೆಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀರ ಆದ್ರೂ ಅದ್ಕೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕಷ್ಟ ಗೊತ್ತಾ ಅದ್ಕೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂಗ್ತ್ ಬೇಕು ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಶಿ ಅಡ್ಮೈಸ್ ಹರ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂಗ್ತ್ ಶಿ ಅಡ್ಮೈಸ್ ಹರ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಹಿಂದಿನ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ದೂರ ಇಟ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ತಾರತಮ್ಯ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಸತ್ತಕ್ಕೆ ಕರ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಆ ತಾರತಮ್ಯ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ಅವ್ರಿನ ಅವಳಿನ ದೂರ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮನ ಅವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅದೇ ನಮ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೇಲಿ ಬೇರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಾವನ್ರು ಉಳಿದವರೆಲ್ಲ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಈ ತರ ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಚಿತ್ರಿಟ್ ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದೊಂದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ತೋರ್ಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಿರ್ತದೆ ಅಯ್ಯೋ ಅಷ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ಬಾರ್ದು ಅವ್ರು ಬಾಳಿ ನೀರು ಮುಟ್ಟಿದ್ರಟ್ಟಿಲ್ಲ ಆತರದ್ದು ಕೆಲವರು ಕನ್ಸೆಷನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಅವ್ರು ಅವ್ರು ಮಾಡಿರೋ ಲೈಬ್ರರಿಗೆ ದುಡ್ಡು ಕೊಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಹಿಂದೆ ಮುಂದೆ ನೋಡಲ್ಲ ಅದೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ಅದನ್ನ ಬೈತಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇವರಿಗೆ ಪೆನ್ಷನ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಕೊಡಲ್ವ ಪೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇವರು ಮಾಲಿ ಕೂಡಿಸ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಪೆನ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದೇ ನೇತ್ರ ಒಂದು ಐವತ್ತು ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಗೆ ಕೊಡಕ್ಕೆ ಏನ್ ಅಳ್ತಾರಪ್ಪ ಏನು ಮೇಲೆ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಿದ್ರೆ ತಗೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಷ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಇಷ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಕೂಡ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮಂಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ಅದನ್ನ ಮೀರ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೂ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಜಸ್ಟ್
ತೋನ್ ನಾಟ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಚರ್ಮ ಬಳಸ್ತೀವ ಚರ್ಮ ಮೂರು ತರ ಚರ್ಮಗಳು ಒಂದಕ್ಕೊಂದ ಸೇರ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಆ ಚರ್ಮದಿಂದ ಕೊಡೋ ನಾದ ತೋಲ್ ನಾದ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಕೈ ನಾದ ಅದು ಮೃದಂಗವಾದಕರ ಕೈಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋದು ಅಂತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತಕ್ಷಣವೇ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಆ ಮೃದಂಗ ತಯಾರಕರನ್ನೇ ಬರ್ಸ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ಮೂರನ್ನು ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ಮರನಾದ ತೋಲ್ ನಾದ ಮತ್ತೆ ಕೈ ನಾದ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅವರನ್ನ ವಿವರಿಸಿದ್ರು ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬ ಮೃದಂಗ ವಾದಕರ ಕೈಗಳಿದ್ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಒಂದು ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಚರ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ಅವ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರ ಕೈಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಬೆವರುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅದ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾನು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗಿರೋದು ತಯಾರಕರಿಗೆ ಅವ್ರು ಈ ಮೂರನ್ನು ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ತರ್ತಾರೆ ಸೊ ಈ ಮೂರನ್ನು ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ತಂದು ಅವ್ರ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಮೃದಂಗವನ್ನ ಹೀಗೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಚೆಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದ್ ಅರಚಾಪನೋ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಕಾಣಿಸ್ದಾಗ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮೊದಲು ಆ ಮೃದಂಗದ ಸದ್ದು ಅಂತ ನಾವೇನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಧ್ವನಿ ಅಂತೀವಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಹೊರ ಹೋಗೋದು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಗೆ ಅದ್ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಆ ಕರುಣೆ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಅವನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಕರುಣೆಯಿಂದ ಹೇಗೆ ನಾದ ಹೊಡುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಸಿವಿರಾಮನ್ ಕೂಡ ಅದನ್ನ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಕರುಣೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾರವಾಗಿದ್ದಾಗ ಅದ್ರಿ ಅದು ಹೇಗೆ ಒಂದು ನಾದವನ್ನ ಹೊಂಬಿಸ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆನೆ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಅದನ್ನ ತನ್ನ ಅನುಭವದಿಂದಾನೆ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಅವ್ನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ನಾವ್ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಕರುಣೆ ಹಚ್ಚಿದಾಗ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ತುಂಬಾ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಬಿರುಕುಗಳಿರುತ್ತೆ ಆ ಬಿರುಕುಗಳಿಂದ ಸದ್ದು ಹೀಗೆ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಬಂದಾಗ ಅದು ನಾದವಾಗಿ ಹೊರ ಹೊಮ್ಮುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನನ್ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲೂ ನನಗೆ ನಾನ್ ಇವತ್ತಲ್ಲ ನಾಳೆ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಸಮ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಮಾತ್ರ ಮೀಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲೇಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇರೋ ಕೊನೆ ಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಪ್ಯಾರವನ್ನು ತಗೊಂಡು ಓದಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಮೃದಂಗ ತಯಾರಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡುವಿನ ಸ್ಫಾಟಿ ಇಲ್ಲದ ನೈಪುಣ್ಯತೆ ಕುರಿತು ಲೆಕ್ಕವಿಲ್ಲದಷ್ಟು ಕಥೆಗಳಿವೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ನಿರೂಪಿಸುವೆ ಸೆಲ್ವರಾಜ ಹೇಳಿದ ಸೆಲ್ವರಾಜ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ಅವರ ಮಗ ಸೆಲ್ವರಾಜ ಹೇಳಿದ ಗಾಢವಾದ ಒಳನೋಟ ಬಂದಿದ್ದ ಒಂದು ಚಿತ್ರಣದೊಂದಿಗೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡುವೆ ಆತ ಒಬ್ಬೊಬ್ಬ ಗಾಯಕನನ್ನು ಪ್ರತಿನಿಧಿಸಲು ಒಂದೊಂದು ರಾಗವನ್ನು ತನ್ನೊಳಗೆ ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದ ಅಂದರೆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ತಾನು ಸಂಬಂಧ ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದ ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಂಗೀತಗಾರರ ನೆನಪಿನಿಂದ ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಂಗೀತಗಾರರ ಗಾಯನ ಅಥವಾ ವಾದನದ ಕೃತಿಯೊಂದನ್ನು ನೆನಪಿಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದರು ಈ ಸಂಗೀತಾತ್ಮಕ ನೆನಪಿನಿಂದ ಅವರು ಕಲಾವಿದರ ಶಾರೀರದ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿ ಅವರ ಸಂಗೀತದ ವಿಸ್ತಾರ ಮತ್ತು ಶ್ರುತಿ ಇವುಗಳನ್ನು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಗ್ರಹಿಸಿ ಅಂತರ್ಗತಪಡಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದರು ತಂಬೂಲವನ್ನು ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಮೇಲಿದರೂ ಸಾಕು ಅದನ್ನು ಮೃದಂಗವು ಪಕ್ಕಾ ಶ್ರುತಿಯಲ್ಲಿರುತ್ತಿತ್ತು ಎಂದರು ಸೆಲ್ವರಾಜ್ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡುವಿಗೆ ಕಿವಿ ಅಷ್ಟು ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಅಭಿನಯಿಸುತ್ತಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎನ್ನುವುದರ ಹಿನ್ನೆಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಅಂಶವು ಇನ್ನಷ್ಟು ಬೆಕ್ಕಸ ಬೆರಗಾಗುವಂತೆ ಮಾಡುತ್ತದೆ ತಾನು ಕೇಳದಿದ್ದಾಗ ಕೂಡ ಸಂಗೀತ ಸಂಯೋಜನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ ಪಿಂಟೋವನ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ತಾನು ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಜತನ ಮಾಡಿಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದ ಸಂಗೀತಕ್ಕೆ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಕೊಡುವ ಮೂಲಕ ಮೃದಂಗಗಳನ್ನು ತಯಾರು ಮಾಡಿದರು ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡುವಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನಾವುದೇ ಸಾಧನದ ಅಂದರೆ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಪೆಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಪಿಚ್ ಪೈ ಮುಂತಾದವುಗಳ ಸಹಾಯವಿಲ್ಲದೆ ಶ್ರುತಿಯನ್ನು ನಿಖರವಾಗಿ ಗುರುತಿಸುವಂತ ಅಪರೂಪದ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯವಿದ್ದೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಬಲಿಯ ಕಂಪನಗಳನ್ನು ಕೇಳಿಯೇ ಶ್ರುತಿಯನ್ನು ಗುರುತಿಸುವ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯವು ಅವರಿಗಿದ್ದೆ ನಮಗೀಗ ಖಚಿತವಾಗಿ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗುವುದು ಸಾಧ್ಯವಿಲ್ಲ ಆದರೆ ಹಾಗೊಂದು ವೇಳೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಆ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯವಿದ್ದರೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೆ ಅಚ್ಚರಿಯೇ ಇಲ್ಲ
ಅಲತೂರು ಸಹ ಸಹೋದರರು ಕರಣೆ ಇತ್ಯಾದಿ ಸೂಚನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಬರೆದಿರುತ್ತಿದ್ದರು ಪನ್ನೊಂದುಗೆ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಬಂಧಗಳನ್ನು ನಿಖರವಾಗಿ ಶುದ್ಧಿಗೊಳಿಸಬೇಕಾದ ಶ್ರುತಿಯು ಗೊತ್ತಿರುತ್ತಿತ್ತು ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಈ ಗಾಯಕರು ತಮ್ಮ ಶ್ರುತಿಯನ್ನು ಕೊಂಚ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಸಿಕೊಂಡರೆ ಅಥವಾ ತಗ್ಗಿಸಿದರೆ ಅಷ್ಟರ ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಮಾರ್ಪಾಡು ಆಗುವಂತೆ ಹೊಂದಿಸಿಟ್ಟಿರಬೇಕು ಎನ್ನುವುದು ತಿಳಿದಿರುತ್ತಿತ್ತು ರಾಜಾರಾಮ್ ಮಾತು ಮುಂದುವರಿಸಿ ಕೇಳಿದರು ಅವರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತಯಾರಕರು ಮನೆಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದ ಆಹ್ವಾನ ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮದ್ವೆ ಆಹ್ವಾನ ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಗಳು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅದನ್ನ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಚೂರುಗಳಾಗಿ ಮಾಡಿಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಂತೆ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಂದೆಯವರು ಕರಣೆ ಅಲಗ್ ಸಹೋದರರು ಅಥವಾ ಇನ್ನೊಂದೇನೊ ಬಂದು ಸೂಚನೆಯನ್ನ ಬಂದು ಸಿಕ್ಸಿಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಮೃದಂಗದ ಬಾರಿಗೆ ಸಿಕ್ಸಿಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಒಮ್ಮೆ ಏನಾಯ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಂದೆಯವರು ಮದುರೈ ಮಣಿ ಅಯ್ಯರ್ಗೆ ಸುಮಾರು ಎರಡು ಮೂರು ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಪಕ್ಕವಾದ್ಯ ನೀಡಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅವರ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಕೊನೆಗೆ ರೇಡಿಯೋದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳಿ ಅವರ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಬರೆದಿಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡರು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡಿಗೆ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಹೇಳಿ ಅದು ಸರಿ ಇದೆಯಾ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರು ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ಅಯ್ಯೋ ಆ ವಿಚಾರ ನಾನು ನೋಡ್ಕೋತೀನಿ ಅಯ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕರಾರು ವಾಕಾಗಿ ಮೃದಂಗ ಸಿದ್ಧ ಮಾಡಿದ ನಮ್ಮ ತಂದೆಗೆ ಅನುಮಾನಗಳಿತ್ತು ಆದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡು ಆತ್ಮವಿಶ್ವಾಸದಿಂದ ಹೇಳಿದ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮಾಡುವಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಹೊಂದಾಣಿಕೆಗಳಿದ್ರೆ ನೀನು ಚಿಂತಿಸಬೇಡಿ ನಾನು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಆಸ್ಪದ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹಾಗಿತ್ತು ಅವನ ಕೆಲಸ ಅವನು ತುಂಬಾನೇ ತೀಕ್ಷ್ಣ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯವನು ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ತಂದೆ ಯಾವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳೋ ಹಾಗೆ ನಾಲ್ಕನೇ ಮನೆ ಮೂರನೇ ಮನೆ ಎಂದು ಶ್ರುತಿಯ ಸಂಖ್ಯೆಯನ್ನು ಅಥವಾ ಎಫ್ ಜಿ ಈ ತರ ಅಕ್ಷರವನ್ನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಪಲ್ಲಾಂಡುವಿಗೆ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ತಾ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬ ಕಲಾವಿದರ ಹೆಸರಿನಿಂದ ಅವರು ಒಂದೊಂದು ನಿರ್ದಿಷ್ಟ ಶ್ರುತಿಯನ್ನು ಗುರುತಿಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದರು ಎನ್ನುತ್ತಾರೆ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಹೋಗ್ತೀನಿ ಮಣಿ ಅಯ್ಯರು ಒಮ್ಮೆ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದಂತೆ ಸೋಮು ಆಚಾರಿ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯ ಗಂಧದ ಮರದಿಂದ ಕಟ್ಟೆಯನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅವರಿಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಕನಸಿತ್ತು ಗಂಧದ ಮರದಿಂದ ಕಟ್ಟೆ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈಸೂರು ಮಹಾರಾಜರಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡಿಸಿ ಮರದ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಗಂಧದ ಮರ ತುಂಡನ್ನು ತಗೊಳ್ಳಿಕ್ಕೆ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡೋದಂತೆ ಬಟ್ ಅದೇನು ಆಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಇವನ್ ಅವರು ಚೌಡಯ್ಯ ಆ ಇದ್ರಿಂದ ಕೂಡ ಏನೋ ಮಣ್ಣಿನ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮೃದಂಗ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಹೆಸರು ಮೃತಿಕೆ ಅದರಿಂದ ಬಂದಿರೋದು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಮಣ್ಣಿಂದನು ಮಾಡಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಂತೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಅವರ ಶೋರೂಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಶೋಕೇಶ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಬಿಡಿದಂತೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಪಡಿಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಮಣಿಯಯ್ಯರು ಒಮ್ಮೆ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರಂತೆ ಸೋಮು ಆಚಾರಿ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯ ಗಂಧದ ಮರದಿಂದ ಕಟ್ಟೆಯನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕು ಪರ್ಲಾಂಡಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮುಚ್ಚಿಗೆಗಳನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿ ಮೃದಂಗವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತು ನಾನು ಆ ಮೃದಂಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಹರಿಯ ಕುಡಿಯ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಅಯ್ಯಂಗಾರ್ ಅವರ ಕಚೇರಿಗೆ ಪಕ್ಕವಾದ್ಯ ನಡೆಸಬೇಕು ನನ್ನ ಪಾಲಿನ ಸ್ವತ್ತವೆಂದರೆ ಅದೇ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ತಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮ ಜಾತಿಯ ಸಂಕೋಲೆಗಳನ್ನು ಕಳಚಿಟ್ಟು ಪರಸ್ಪರರ ಹುಚ್ಚೋಲ ಘನತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅನಂದದಿಂದ ಮುರುಗೇಡುವ ಸ್ವತ್ತದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ಸಂಭವಿಸಿದೆ ಎಂದು ನಾನು ಭಾವಿಸಿದೆ it was really a very fantastic discussion very interesting really interesting uh, why because at present in mysore akashwani a series of program is broadcasting about mudaga the first the print phase of the program is going on the behind phase of the program is queue of advance then so this start of come and now it has been i think it has been complex in my mind so number of persons have been there my question is i do do respect to the 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 privileges of people who you are uh, brought out till kindly please explain this my question is how long this process of preparation that they were till the day end because it's a process that made of intention is a phenomenon it's a phenomenon so it was a lot of preparation
today is the part where the wood, where the whole chapter on the wood, uh, the community that actually makes the shell. Okay, the, the mridangam is usually made of jackfruit, but they have experimented with other woods and some still work. But everybody, jackfruit is considered preferable. Uh, whether it is a tambura, whether it is a veena, whether it is a mridanga, that is still considered something that people. Now, if you start the process then, if you say that's when the process starts, then you get a. Please understand the makers are also making it for different people. They are making it for shops, they are making it for students, and they are making it for you can switch it up because that speaker something. So they are making it for uh, young people, but they are making it professionally. To get a good wood is about three three months process. Okay, from the selection of the tree to getting that portion of the lower part of the trunk. The lower part of the trunk is the better part of the wood. Very uh, sensibly, it's the older part of the wood. And the, also the, the circumference is, the tree grows like this. So the outside is newer, the inside is older, right? So all these things go into selection. Then after three months, then the wood is bought, is, is the hollow is made, it's shaped, the size is decided, etc. Is brought to the maker. Now, parallelly, you must also consider the maker is going in selecting skin. What a lot of makers do is that they have stocks of skin. They don't go for every other. So, whenever there is a good buffalo skin available or cow skin available, so on an average, if you take a big buffalo, you can get about 18, 14 to 18 tattis. Tattis is a round. So, it's interesting, it's called a tattis. We eat on it, but that's interesting. Uh, so there are 14 to 18. So that will be enough for as many Vrindangas, right? In that there is lower quality, higher quality, of course. They know which is for whom. So you can't say if, if you take all this together and then you start choosing the skin, putting the skin, then there is one place, thing called Puyvar, and then they will take that out, and then Topi Mutip, all that you take it. That's say about a three week work process, approximately. We are looking at a total of about four months overlapping because skin work happens can happen along with the wood work. Four months, the total process. If the wood is here already given and the mridana maker starts the work, 15 days for a good mridana. They can give you six days also. But if they want to do a good, really good job, they say give me good 10 days, I will do your good mridana. 10 to 15 days, yes. <laughs> So they do many things for seasoning. So, uh, <clears throat> so what they do is the cleaning process itself is a long process. Okay, how you clean it? Uh, you have to take all the flesh and the fat out. So what they call a jabu. So for example, for a long time I didn't know what this jabu was. I thought it was flesh. So like, even jabu is not jabu. Like, what is this jabu? Then I realized fat. So you need to take the fat out, and then you need to soak it in water, and then you need to dry it. So all that is there. There is also another process that they now do. They, they put uh, sunamul. Uh, some people don't like that tonality. Some people like that tonality. There is major hierarchies there also. I won't go into that conversation. But when they put sunamul, what happens is interesting. It's a chemical process that happens. For a long time, I thought sunamul thins the skin. It doesn't do that actually. So it doesn't thin it. But it changes the tonality of the skin. It becomes a little sharper. Okay, it does something to the surface in some manner. The color changes. So if you're doing that, that's another day's work, two days work. It's a kind of so. It depends on the tone that you require. Uh, so the seasoning is that. So they don't do more than that for actually seasoning. To think of it, it's not more than that. In the olden days, by the way. Um, I think most of us will know the cricket analogy. So if you bought cricket bats in those days, you had to do something called seasoning. You had a hanging ball and you'll keep hitting the bat. Right? Nowadays you don't need to. Now the bats come uh, prepared. The Murdan student, Takta Murkarada is the process. Takta is Murkarada is how we say Murkarada is actually just uh, <laughs> ah, twist. Okay. So the, the, if I was a big Murdan player, I would give a new Muradangam to my student. He has to whack the hell out of it. Because he has to practice. So he will be beating it up. And he will practice in it for two months. And they will change the Karana at least twice. 
Only the third time that the sadam or the karana has been changed is that mridana fit for concept. So the seasoning is done by the soup. This used to happen. Nowadays it doesn't happen. Nowadays mridana makers will tell you they make a mridana in the afternoon, it's on stage at 6 o'clock. They sometimes are delivering the mridana at the concert stage. So things have changed. So they've also learned how to fast forward a lot of these processes. How to get it done faster, little shortcuts here. The, but only problem with shortcuts is not last. So if people are worried about the ecology, you must remember that the new process actually requires more skin because you're changing skin every month. Whereas the old process, you could use one mridakam for like good one year, one and a half years with the same food. So this kind of technology is about to change. Okay. So this black portion is very interesting. Yeah. So the black portion is actually made of two things. It is actually boiled rice. That's why it's called sadam. Okay. It's called sadam water. Boiled rice and a special stone. Now in my book there is a scientific I did actually I took the stones to IIT and actually tested all of them. Uh, because they all claim that it all has very high ferrous content. They all told you. They actually said manganese, which is not as much as they think there is. But the Tanjavu makers and like any profession, there is a major ego product that needs school of making. Punjab think they make the best in the world. The Palgar think they make the best in the world. Uh, people here think they are better. So that ego is also very interesting to watch. They will be criticizing the other making style of that. So this Tanjavur Kallan, which is called the Kitan Kallan, it's basically a volcanic rock. Some kind of a volcanic rock. It's found actually in a river bed, in a stream bed. Only one location. Okay. So they pick it up from there and they make it to a powder. A similar stone is found in Palakkad. Okay. Also in Andhra, uh, yes, similar, but not the same. In Andhra, they use another kind. So what I did is I tested all of them. I did a chemical test of all of them. To really check what is there in these stones, what are the percentages of ferrous or various kinds of iron there are and all that. So that is powder mixed with boiled rice and it's applied in one of the most beautiful processes with a thumb. It's like a circle they do. And it's a little hump it was that. They'll say Ikki Mari Kam. Like Ikki. Okay. So it's a little beautiful hump. And of course, each brother is also has preferences. Some people don't like too much of a protrusion. See, a lot of playing is also your feel of the, the instrument. So they may not like a too much of so all that they need to know. The only thing with that is after if you depending on your playing style, it lasts two, three, four concerts. Then you'll start falling off. Then you have to go back again, put Sadam again. So that's the black spot that you see. It's this is a little different from what is used in tablas, for example. Yeah. Slightly different. Yeah. Well, the skin needs to be to the so, um, the which one? You know, the skin is to the you mean the, the rope that is used? Okay. So, so well, there's, in, there's a lot of interesting uh, interesting things happening in research on that and I'm kind of participating in it. Uh, one of the things I'm sure about is that the brother of shell size has nothing to do with some. It's a big bogus fraud. That if you have a 22 inch, it brings deeper sound or it is all nonsense. Okay, and this is, I, there's a professor working on the, on something similar we had a chat about this. You're absolutely right. Because brother of make, uh, players and makers, make, players also told me, before Manier came, they used only an 18 inch. The whole length was 18 inch. So if you see the old Terraya photos of Umbrata were hanging from a neck, you will see this is all this. So there's an old player called Madras Kanu who passed away, unfortunately. He said, Kani Kadakka Now, why did they make it big? One could be sound, the other is the majesty of the look. When the, when the Murata became bigger, you become bigger. And this was done by Maniya. This even Madras can say, Maniya by Naram sir. And he was critical. He said, total waste of time. I don't know why he did it. But the reason he did is very interesting. So it's also about the personality. So Murata looks bigger. You look bigger. He went up to almost 28 inches, 30. And then he finally realized he, get, uh, he, was, he was paying too much. He kept it at home. He didn't play. So now they use 24. 22, 24, depending on the pitch. But that's a bogus claim. You can use an 18 inch diameter for whatever pitch you want. 
The maker will also tell you, it's got to do with how I make it even. So you bring me any, any, any kata and make it show you. So that is what. Now the question of whether the tying, the harnessing, what we call the bar, contributes to sound. Yes, it does. Any kind of harnessing does because it is where the pitch is being determined. So that it's also where, let me correct myself. First is the pitches. Now, actually, when you make a program, you can't be sure about the pitch. The pitch settles at a certain point. So, whether a maker can approximately on choice of skin tell you that it will be between 1 and 2 or 1 and 3. But it cannot tell you that that is going to be a 1 and a half mother. No way. So, what they initially do is very interesting. So, they initially increase the pitch to 5 times 6, something like 7 or 8. And they hold it there, they leave it there like that for 2 days. Then they lose it. That is what is called Koi Varabri. Okay? They lose it. Take it out, and then the original dating happens. Now, even there, all the three tattas may be good, very level. But depending on how the harness is equalized on any side, the pitch will be equal. If it's not equal nicely, the opposite ends will have a problem. So that is what they call yenche tattu. Yenche means high, tattu means low. So there should be no yenche tattu. See, there should be no conflict of high and low, right? So, even the harnessing affects it, the selection of the skin affects it, all that. It's a combination of things. I can't only say it's that. It's a combination of things. Well, economic status is not great. When you, you know, I, mean, I don't know what our baseline is to judge economic status. Uh, I mean, it is a very difficult thing to make a profession of. There's no doubt about it. Um, where they, benefit, they have benefited is when these shops ask for products. There you don't need to care about the quality of the, the they tell you the most difficult thing is to make products for players. Because they don't make money out of it and they are best. Right? Because they want professionally. They, they are saying making money for shops, then mass supply, then you can, you know, you can send, you can make a buck. Or NRA is another great thing. All these people are students, no? 10 students, 15 students, the US, supply and no problem. There you can make a money. So, that has helped them. Honestly, these things have helped them. But in general, there is, it stops at a certain level. So, of course, next generation, some people are not doing only this. They are doing other jobs and they come and join their father in the evening for work. Uh, some want to go, some are going to colleges. So, but they also have pride in their work. So, it's one of those difficult things. They do other things, but they say they want to still, the father will say, I want my son to carry on this tradition. Yeah. Right? So that kind of a conflict is still there. So, um, it's, I mean, it is not great. They don't live in the best economic uh, ways. They don't. But I would not call them poor. Yeah. If that's the word we are looking for, I would not call them poor. But it's not great. I mean, the difference between their position and the position of the performer is that fancy. Yeah. One second, please. Right. So there is this old uh, new edition, Iverglass, in Ah, yeah. So is that good in one of the... Oh, of course they do. I mean, the people experimenting are finally going to live to make this, uh, brother. I mean, the shell can be done by somebody, but who's going to put the skin there? Who's the maker? So, this fiberglass, this glass and all that they've tried. Fiberglass was started by TV Gopal Krishnan like decades ago. It's there in the book, I speak about it. Uh, well, then it's good or bad, I've not put it since then. Because after all, you'll have to figure that out whether you like the sound or not. Umyapun Shoraman has done an entire class for the room, which I think, I, I think is just unfeasible. So heavy, you can't carry it and take it everywhere, very practically speaking. Uh, it looks good, all that is there. Um, so the question then is, how much does the shell contribute to the Murdagam sound? And I'm more and more convinced with the kind of research we are doing, the shell contributes very little. So, we are trying to do some drastic experiments and I will wait for some data before I can stick my neck out and say with confidence. But I think the shell contributes far less than the we think. It is entirely the, the opening and the skin that is contributing to the resonance. So, it should not matter whether you put glass, fiberglass or wood. Uh, because actually, very, you know, the thickness of that wood is so much. There is no way sound is coming out of it. You must see the Murdagam thickness, the Y, otherwise they say, it's massive, it's a thick. So, actually there have been some experiments done to see how much sound is actually coming out of the wood phase. 
there was very minimal coming out. So there are, I mean, there's some work we can do and find out. So I don't think it should make such a big difference. Some people say fiberglass has a sharper sound. You know, I heard this, but when I heard the glass product by Shivaraman, I found it just like his other product. What we need is a blind test. So I don't think so. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just going to take her cues. Jack. Jack. Mainly. With this book, you have touched the sociological, anthropological, and historical uh, narrative of uh, Brotherhood Maker. That is one academic discipline with the official work and all that. So, what did that cause to the academicians, and was there any discussion in the academic circles, which usually gives non academic surveys, no matter how rich you are? That is one thing. Second thing is, what did it do to the community? Was there discourse? Was there acknowledge? I mean, what was the response to the to the book in terms of did it feel acknowledged or, uh, or I mean, uh, what was their response or did it go about? Okay, so the first question, I mean, interestingly, yes, there has been interesting conversations in the academic world. Uh, but we are all territorial, so that remains. <laughs> That's not going to change. I mean, I, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I understand it something, so I'm not going to say much about it. But yes, there have been interesting discussions. There have been interesting reviews from the academic community, discussions with me. Uh, curiosity about this entire thing. So yes, I think that it has triggered uh, some interesting passageways there. One of one very senior academician told me, you know, I wrote about this message for academics to think deeply about these things, but we don't think. Uh, you know, we, we intellectualize structures, but we don't look at how this is an operation in the culture. One of the biggest problems I find in the academic world is in the way, say, culture and art is dealt with, is I think there are, there are, the framework is entirely coming from a sociological perspective, which does not bring aesthetics into it at all. And aesthetics both as an experiential quantity and also as a structural quantity. So, yeah, they may learn violin for three months or something like that, but that's nothing. So, there is a huge lacuna in a way, in the way many of, I mean, I have great respect, I've, I've referred so many of these great but I still feel there's a gap. Is like that does not look at what is Kamboji in that mess. That's so important because if you don't know that, you can't have this discussion, right? So why does that person exist in that in spite of this? Or how can you still cry for that in spite of it? So this is for me. My space is there. That's my space. So yeah, to the mother of Vegas, honestly, they're actually reading it only now because it's coming. Because it was mainly in English and all they heard about is what I told them about in each chapter. And I told them honestly, I've also brought in all your conflicts, all your fights between each other. And they know it. But I think it's, it's very different when they read it. So it's now that they're reading it and few people have called and said I love this. It's so interesting. It's like almost, it's almost a video fictional story though it's about our family. So, uh, you know, like it's it's like, uh, so I think I would get more responses in the next few months. That way they read it. But um, so far I think they're quite happy about uh, the book. I'm sure there are areas where I know they will be uncomfortable. And that's because it also looks at wedges and problems within the community. And that's not something that probably they're going to, they would have, they would fight with me probably, but that's, that's bound to happen. I mean, that's how it should be. I don't know, what time is it like? Is that 3.30 Chennai flights, what time? Ah, 3.30. Yeah, you know. <laughs> The whole, whole book, uh, it's more about the generations. It's about the generation of uh, makers, right? One after the other. Many, no, no, sir. Uh, speakers. Many of your conversations with the makers, if you ever come across anyone from your generation who would be interested in being a performer, <laughs> because I have not read it. As like maybe just a few issues yeah. here and there, but during a conversation, have they uh, shown any interest in becoming performers? And if so, if so, have they got any support from the so-called legendary? Industry? So yes, not now. There have always been some people among the family who wanted to learn the Uh 
uh, I think some time ago they were dissuaded directly, right? Uh, but they have also been some who have learned, some of them is learning. But the fact is that even that is done like some charity. Though. So it will not, this is like what she quoted and said, no, at that time you discriminated by keeping us far. Now you discriminate by keeping us close. This is a classic case. So in a classroom, I will treat two students differently. <laughs> And all teachers like within quotes what they call smarter students, right? You know what that means. Uh, but that's what's so the truth is many of them by the way play for devotional music in their church. Uh, there was one who was actually a professional light music player, percussionist. He passed away unfortunately. So, so many of them also play, though they have not been formally trained. They have just picked it up and played. Some have tried to learn, but there's not been one. Who has really been on the stage? You know, and that is that says something. That says for after 60 years of a relationship with Mandana players, that does not one say something. Yeah. So it's it's, it's a difficult space. Yes. yes, sir. Groups not only being promoted, groups not the bad. Bad. What happens to the makers? Well, it's a good question. Oh, it's a very valid question. Luckily, in Tamil Nadu, you can't do that stuff. <laughs> but by the way, I just want to make clear, there are still conditions for slaughter. I hope you know that. Even in Tamil Nadu, there are rules and regulations. Okay, so it's not like... So, but in Tamil Nadu, so when I went to the abattoir, every interview I videoed and I audio recorded. But I didn't take a camera because I was scared. Because that's when this thing had started, so, you know, band thing was happening, so I didn't. The first question they asked me, camera idea. <laughs> so they are not bothered about me shooting the entire process or anything. So, uh, but it is a serious issue. Now, for example, in Karnataka, all the skin is got from Tamil Nadu or from Kerala. Because you cannot get good skin here. It is a serious problem. I think that these people who are talking about band who also go to concerts and take photographs and musicians say, oh, Indian culture, look at this, should also ask that question of themselves. They like taking videos of themselves. South Jagaraja is great, Dixit is great, they give us also advice about those things. They should also then think about this. Okay, why don't you ban cow slaughter? Let's see how Jagaraja is great with no more than one of The other problem, I want to just make one thing. There is this tendency now, this new thing about skin, about making vegan madhanam. And I want to make a very, it's a very problematic space. Of course, vegan madhanam is made by Brahmin. Right? So I have multiple, I have no problem with you wanting to do something new, fine. And you want to, you, you feel strongly about uh, ecology, etc. I mean, I'm not arguing. But who's taking it? Are you calling the Pradhanam makers who made it for 60 years and saying, let's innovate together? No. So the people who made that Pradhanam, which you are unwilling to touch the skin, are going to be thrown to the side. You're going to say, I'm making with fiber, making with some synthetic material and saying this is vegan and protecting you can have no environmental, ecological conversation without social justice. You cannot have. And the tendency for upper caste, ecology, environmental conversation, it all stinks of casteism. Sorry, I have no minor way of saying it. It just stinks of it. And that's so disturbing. Because to me, you make this murdanam and what happens? Suppose this becomes the rule. So are you going to say that these families that made it for 120 years, you would have no money here or the parenting without these families? What happens? So when you are doing something, you don't want them included in this. You don't want them to participate in this. So all these things, I am a little very, I am personally very wary of. So I don't know what cause law is. Cause law becomes, say, a national thing. If the director principle is now taken over and made part of some fundamental, it's not a, let's not be surprised. It may actually happen, right? And then what happens to the brother? You should ask them. You should ask them what will happen to the brother. And all the and the same the, the tragedy is the brother and players also support all this. That is the biggest irony. They support these fools who are asking for this ban while they live on a dead cow skin. Their entire profession depends on killing a cow. Ironies of life. Mm -hmm. 
So actually very interesting because a lot of people said should a book come about that. You have very similar things playing out there. Okay. Um, they have, many of the makers are, are Muslims. Okay. Muslims. And I would suspect, I'm not sure, I suspect Muslims that belong to caste groups that are far lower in the ladder. Okay. Um, but I, from what I've spoken to people, similar things do exist there. But they have not been explored and they have not been written about. Similar kind of separations, understandings are there. Uh, but I don't know how intrinsically they play out. I don't know as yet. Actually, I've been asking people to actually write about it. You know, just go and find out what's happening. But the information I got till now is that there are very similar things happening, but happens in a different tone than happening here. In a different tone, but it does exist. <coughs> Bakavaj, any skin, see any instrument, huh? no. so it's very interesting, so most other instruments will be made by the community that makes mountain, okay, or what they call in Tamil Nadu, the Asari community, or could be Achari community here, so anybody, the carpenter community basically, the other ones who are making most other instruments, whether it is a Veena, whether it is a Kambura, etc. Now, their caste equation is very different. Their positionality in the whole structure is very different. But when it, only when it comes to skin, does the, you go down, down the ladder, fundamentally because of charma, because it is sourced. Now, that completely changes. So another interesting thing which I found, and actually that's when we had a first conversation with Mara when I met uh, So if you go down the caste ladder, the separation of the maker and the player disappears. Very interesting. Every Dalit percussionist is also the maker of his own instrument. He has no choice. Who is he going to pass it on to? He has to make his instrument.
which had critiqued the book. It's a very problematic book. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Okay, read the book and then see. Sarvam Tanmay was a movie, supposedly about a Mardanga maker, but it uh, positions itself in ways that I find uh, very disturbing for this discourse. Uh, one, it almost says that the only way, um, only thing for the Mardanga maker to be great is to become a player. The father, how many times does he appear in the film? The maker doesn't appear in the film. And there is also this black and white positioning of the evil Brahmin and the good Brahmin. Yeah. <laughs> the evil Brahmin is the one who tells this guy you can't enter my home. The good Brahmin who, who is the one who talks to him and says you are not good enough to enter my home. <laughs> you remember that scene? I will never forget that scene. I am seeing it with my I saw, unfortunately I saw one of the previous shows with the people who made people. And they can't say anything. I was, I was, I, I found that so problematic because this guy says, get out, get out, what are you going to do? And then the senior man comes and he says, you, you know, all this you will not get. You know, you know, you will not be able to do this. You know, this music is like a temple. Now this entire discourse is so history. And then he has to prove himself. And how does he prove himself? By appearing at every ritual that is happening. And then he stops eating non-vegetarian. Just the entire discourse, it's not a 2020 discourse. If this movie is made in maybe 1960s, maybe you could say fine. At a point where the discourse is elsewhere, we can't be having this kind of a discourse. I find the movie problematic and I have in two lines critiqued it in the book. Thank you, Dean uh, Krishna, Sumagala, Shailita. Thank you, everybody. So, I request Vijay Lakshmi and Kutti, the founder of this trust, to honor uh, Thank you. Thank you. 